Statue of Liberty, who is not big. No. You think um, she's bigger? I think if she were bigger, maybe she would take in some more of our poor and our hungry. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, for subtitles, John Michael, I said I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be political. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do this. What do you think? To like... The whole too thing artsy. is the whole thing is too artsy for my taste. So what's, I think going over the top. What's is, the whole thing? Well, there's like a fig, fig, fig plant behind you. The cacti. My least favorite flower of all, the orchid. The the huh. pissed pussy. Okay. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah, Look in its I eye. love orchids. I actually, they're my favorite. I have is I really? I have orchids all the time on my podcast. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You just welcome them on here with their angry Japanese faces. You, you know what? I'd never heard this about you, but it seems like you got strong points of view. I do. Okay. I do. Are you familiar with composition? No. Right. So without <laughs> the plant, it's just kind of a boring. So we're just looking for a little bit of balance. Right. But I still need to focus me. So if you could just okay give me like twenty minutes. Okay. Sure. I'll be right around mm -hmm. here. What's going on? Nice, nice. I saw what you did there. Girls, just get started without me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we going? Going. 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 There's no red light. It's annoying. Oh, there's a red light. Top corner. Oh, it's too bright in here from the ma magnificent yeah. Manhattan Let's view for me to see the... Beautiful view, isn't it? It's really nice. You know what? The only thing I think that rivals that view is this one. Oh. Isn't Thank it gorgeous? So Look behind you. You're right. You're right. You're right. That is a better view. All right. Is there anything you want to plug? Up top? We're doing plugs up top? What are you, crazy? This is a very short podcast. Is it? Yes. Wow. I do. It's called the uh, Give Me a Second podcast. And Give it's, me one second. Yeah, it gives me, it's like five or 15 minutes of me setting up, and then I have the guest plug, plug. whatever oh, he or okay. she. Okay, great. What do I have to plug? I don't know when this is coming before, out. Before you even... Consider it. Get into this. Okay. Don't you think it's good or cool of me to have women on my podcast? I do. I do. I was thinking that when I got the DM, I thought. Shh, shh, shh. Go ahead. I thought, wait a second. Hold on. I'm. I just got so insecure. Did you understand that me shushing you was me being a man shushing a woman being disrespectful on purpose? Of course. Did you see that me immediately complying with what you said was me being a woman in contemporary yeah. society. I just didn't know because <laughs> women usually don't get it. Go ahead. Well, there is a, quite a few things over there. I thought maybe, you know. Yeah, but if I really shushed you. I don't really shush. Oh, well, I come from an Italian family. They shush? You're Jewish. You get shushed. I don't get shushed. You don't get shushed? No, I get talked over. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, I'm used to that. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm a loud talker. And a lot of times I'm talking shit, so I'm very used to it. If somebody goes, shh, I'm trained to know that they're sitting right behind me. I'm going to actually make you even louder in my cans. Wow. Yeah. Shocking. I love a loud woman. Oh, nice. Me too. <laughs> Do you? No, I hate them. I want them quiet. What do you like? I want like? to be the only loud woman. I like a quiet world. What's your sexuality? I know. You tell me. Straight, unfortunately. Lesbian moms. Which, what do you mean lesbian moms? Oh, you have lesbian moms. Three of them. Three of them. Go on. I got Donna, Kaz, and Michelle, and a dead dad. What happened to you, Kaz? <laughs> <laughs> Why is she in the middle? Kaz is, uh, that's my biological mom. Right. Is she, she your main married, mom? She's the main mom. There's mom number one, Kaz. 
I think I'm I think I'm in the heat. Close the blinds. Do you remember you said you're Jewish, crazy? right? Yeah. <laughs> did, 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 did that answer you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Jordan, you're so funny. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm right. not gay. I seem gay, but I'm not gay. You know, there's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash Tyso. FitBod, F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Tyso. This episode of Take Your Shoes Off is sponsored by BetterHelp. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Looking for therapy but don't know where to try? Don't know where to go? Don't know where to begin? Visit BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash T-Y-S-O. Also, I think I just found out the show got picked up. So, fuck yeah, dude. Nice. Okay, tell me about your lesbian moms. Okay. Cos married Michelle, then then Cos cheated on Michelle, then Michelle married Donna, who worked for Cos. Who's your biological dad? That's not, what, are you kidding me? You think that's going to do something? That's, if anything, it's reflecting the, you think that's going to, all right. I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't know if it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I'm just going. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, you know, you take off and potty for a little bit, and then you travel, and you're here, and it's like, all right, you're doing it, you're back in the pocket, but like... You know what I did today? The most embarrassing thing ever. What? I got my motorcycle out of the shop a couple days ago, and I was going to drive it here on this beautiful 65-degree day, and I just immediately dropped it. What do you mean? You, like, it literally dropped? I dropped my, I've dropped it in, in my driveway. Broke it, broke the brake. Ubered here. Oh, fuck. It was totally fine. But so I wait, think it's, you're, my you're brake was loose because it was there over winter. And then we tried to, and then somebody had smashed my motorcycle. So it was just bent forward so that my hands couldn't quite reach it. So then we heated it up and bent it. But then today when I went to brake, it snapped and the bike just kind of took off without me. I was fine because it took off, but it crashed itself. So where what's happening with it? It's in my driveway. It's going to get fixed. And you're just okay? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But it was, I was excited to motorcycle here. It was going to be pretty. Yeah. So I took a gay Uber. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I don't mind <laughs> Uber or Lyft as long as you're straight. Lyft is, I think, I would say Lyft is the gay one. Uber is like the the black guy. Right. Well, I think you're thinking of the, the logo. The co- yeah. yeah. I think you're thinking I think, of a I think pink, right. red logo versus a black. It was an Uber. It's just a picture mm. of a black guy who has a big smile and it's just a smile. It's just a black guy, no eyes. Right. But a big just smile. a smile. Yeah. 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 Right. Have you seen that movie, Smile? Yeah. I just watched it. Really? Alone? No. Did you watch it alone? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did not around this. It's, it's scary. You know what I watched yesterday? Silence of the Lambs. Great. Yeah. How come I've never seen the cut where he goes... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You had to have seen that. I, I know. That's what I said when I saw it. Did you already know about that, though, because of Dumb I and Dumber? I did not. No. We can be classy and sophisticated. Oh, look at the fun bags on that hose hound. I'd like to eat her liver with some farver beans and a nice bottle of key ante. <laughs> it's so good. I I burst it's into good. laughter. And then the guy next to me looked over and saw somebody like getting skinned alive and me laughing hysterically. Did you see it in a theater? No, in, on that Delta flight yesterday. Got you. Where'd you fly in from? Dallas. How are your arms? Oh my God. We'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back. This is good. Dallas was good. It was fun. It was, I think, maybe the best improv besides like Hollywood improv. What about the DC improv? I think this is good. I think this is better. They're not woke. I don't like crowds that aren't woke. Seriously. Uh, truly? Mm-hmm. Gold, gold, Why is that? Gold. I don't like dumb not woke, but I definitely don't like woke. I, my favorite. I, I almost, I almost, I I mean, I'll perform, I guess, in front of any crowd. But like, if I had my druthers, my, yeah. can I say that? I don't know what druthers means. I think it's bad to say. If I had my way. Uh, what are what do you think druthers is? This is like that word. It's one. I think it's the one with it where you have like the thing. I don't want to say it. Druthers? I thought that was related to a horse. Saddle up the druthers. Druther- Give me, pass me the druthers. I think 
Uh, it sounds like a Western thing. Druthers is like, uh, you say druthers when it's like, if I had it my way, I think instead of saying my way, because that's like basically Frank Sinatra owns that saying now. You yes. say my druthers. I could look it up. I just want to waste you, everyone's time. I kind of do want you to look it up. Druthers, I feel like, is like the reins of the horse or jowls. Druthers feels Western. It definitely doesn't feel racist. Druthers, a person's preference in a matter. If I had my druthers, I would prefer to be a writer. Right, etymology of druthers. Okay, I know how to spell that. <laughs> what did I say the other day that I felt racist about saying? Oh, reneg. Yeah. Renegotiate. It's yeah. not racist at all. But if you do it over and over again, yeah. you would call that person is a... Mm -hmm. Renegotiator. Re right. English would rather, down to English, I'd rather, round down to late 19th century druther. Late 19th century from a U.S. regional pr pronunciation of I'd rather contracted to would rather. Wow. Well, what is that, how, what's druther? So it's just a slur. Druther. I'd rather. Wow. <laughs> I guess that is Southern, huh? I think it is. I'd rather. I'd rather. Drather. If I dr if I had my drathers. <laughs> yeah, if I'd rather. <laughs> yeah. What, did you say drather? Drather. Drather. If I'd rather. If I had my drathers. <laughs> if I had my rather. Drather is an alternate word for would rather. Would wow. rather. The D. De rather. D apostrophe. Apostro oh, would rather. Yeah, yeah wow. Rather. Would rather. I said, I think it's Western. I think it's like cowboys. Uh, any way you drather. Any way you'd Any rather way have you it. Rather, that's the way you like that it. That is the way I'd that. rather have it, says mm -hmm. Huck to Tom and Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer. Detective. Yes. You know, Mark Twain is not his real name. What is it? I don't remember. Charlie or something. But Mark Twain, he was a, he was a, a steams boat, steamboatsman. Back then in like the 1800s, that's what you wanted to be. Like a that, steamboat captain? Steamboat captain. Because steamboats were all the, you know, everyone loved a steamboat. Did they? Oh, yeah. Have you seen Narcos? Not Narcos. Uh, Ozark? <laughs> Yeah. What's that? That's not a steamboat. They love him. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he always wanted to be a steamboat captain. In fact, he was for a while. It sounds like it. And it's a term. When, when a steamboat, it's safe to go. It needs to have at least six inches of water. or um, And that's called something. But two six inches of water, 12 inches, is yeah. called uh, a Mark Twain. Like, that's what they say. Mark Twain. And now that's his pen name. I can't tell if you're telling me. I you. believe that you can't tell. It's yeah. true. Is it really? Do you want me to prove it to you? How? Do you have a tugboat? <laughs> <laughs> um, if I could prove it to you, would it be worth it? Because I could do it. No. Okay. I believe you. Because a mark sounds like something you would mark. And a twain sounds something old timey. So I believe yeah. it. But, am, but now that I've believed you, will you tell me if you've punked me? Um, but then that won't impress you much. <laughs> Put up twain. Put up the lyric. Cut to the thing. That don't impress me much. Yeah, baby, take off my shoes. Okay. All right. So you were telling me that your parents are a lot of gays. Moms. Moms. I was you're say. right. You're, you're supposed right, to right, call right, them moms right, now. Yes. Okay. Horde of homos is what I call them. A horde of yep. homos. My little pack of dykes. You could say that. Oh, I can. I can say whatever I want. Once you get a tattoo, you could do anything. It's Nobody's true. Gonna question you. I have a tattoo right now. It's very raised mm -hmm. from the sun. Itchy. Do you want me to? No. So tell me, so your your mom meets your your biological dad. Uh, yes. Where'd they meet? And was she Well, this gay is then? the big joke that is the truth. It, okay. They met, he was the coach of her rugby team. And he didn't know and she didn't know. I wish I had brought a picture. They look like the same. They look like two tan grizzly bears. Will you send me the picture? I will. Yeah, two they tan do. Grizzly bears. Yeah, they do. And they're yeah. Just put up a picture of two grizzly bears. Yeah. <laughs> with sunblock on their noses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so was she homosexual at the time well, that she was out and aware of? No. So she was only with guys. She was like the one rugby player that people were like, they, all the women were trying to turn her. She was like me. And she was like, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm right. not gay. I seem gay, but I'm not gay. And then, uh, she left my dad and then she, my dentist seduced her. She left your dad. She left my dad. But for, she was already with him and she, had kids. Yes. Had me and my cunt sister, me and my sister. We'll edit around that. Sorry. And uh, then she <laughs> broke up with my dad because he was a stoner. Ugh. Stoner. I know. It's gross. It's Weed? Really gross. Weed is, yes, my nightmare, truly. Bye, I know. Bye. I'd rather date an alcoholic who beats me than a hoodie string chewer. Oh, yeah. bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess we could spend all of our money on Funyuns. What about rent? 
Oh, what are we going to do without rent? Okay. Good. Jar of candy. It's not in frame. People don't get it. There are two massive jars of assorted candy. And I don't mean assorted candy as in like some dum-dums and some like caramel chews. Actually, caramel chews would be amazing. It's the best types of candy in two separate jars loaded. Mm. Somebody has taken two pieces. How? If there's candy in my backpack for are you one Native bar. American? <laughs> Damn. Damn it. I don't want things like that to burst me into laughter. I want to be immune slightly. Why? <laughs> I really? Don't know. I don't know. There's something real there. I actually want to hear what that means. Tell me why. <laughs> why? Yeah. Uh like a like a why like a quick street joke? Why would you not want Cuz it's like give when somebody me all the laughs. It's like when somebody farts like I I have like okay, you know what happened recently? I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you. I was on a train and there was a big fat homeless man. Huge. Huge and fat. And he had a little tiny, somebody's calling me, he had a little tiny helmet on and he was sitting on the train, okay? Funny enough. A little enough, tiny helmet. Little on. tiny bicycle helmet strapped under right. his chin, okay? Mm. The helmet was would never protect him in any world, much less a mo train where you- You don't know what he needs protection from. Right, exactly. But I found out what it was. He, he kept falling asleep and tipping and his little helmet would tip the train and then he'd sit back up, Okay. Now his helmet would tip the when he would he blow would, over. He, he would was fall that fat asleep. That the train would go off the track. No, 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 no. I wish it was. He would tip over, hit his little helmet on the side of the thing, and then sit back up and wake back up. Right. Okay. I Cute. was with a guy who I was in love with, who I could tell he was a little on the fence about me. How could I, you tell? I want to cut to him just. just, just I don't like associated. her. Yeah, yeah. I don't like her body and face. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. <laughs> Um, I started laughing so hard that I, I, I mean, I was weeping, weeping. I had a mask on. It was COVID times. And the second we got off the train, the guy was like, I, I don't think we should see each other anymore. So I have the thing where if something is like, if it's funny in the dumbest way, I can't keep it together. But why? But so is, does that traumatize you where you feel like now you're being judged for laughing at things? I just have a very low... <laughs> Hanging fruit. I just am a, I feel like a bit of a hick almost, or like a baby. I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I am a bit of a The hick. audience at home is like, yeah, we yeah, see yeah, this. Yeah, 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 you are a hick. Yeah, I get, thought you were leaning that. into that. But so, but you don't like that. You don't like that you laugh then. I don't like that if somebody farts in a yoga class, I'm, I have to leave because I'm laughing so hard. Everyone I is. I've been in yoga classes where they're like, and that's part of the body. And I am like snorting, crying in child's pose until they're like, you need to leave, please. <laughs> Um, can I do a joke about what you said? Please. Um, yeah, a child's pose, more like baby pose, yeah. the way you can't put yourself together. Pretty good. I don't know if okay. you needed to, okay. but I get it. Okay, 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 okay. okay, so your mom leaves your stoner biological dad. May he rest in peace. Right. What happened? I don't, we don't know. He was just curled up on the couch, asleep dead. S cutest, cutest little d death you've ever seen. H how old were you? 23. He was 58. Were you, he was in your life? Oh yeah. But I mean. Canadian? Yeah. Native American? Yes. Um, are you Canadian? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I got to be better. Too many questions. So keep them coming. I'll answer them as fast as possible. I have a lot of coffee. In here. Okay. So go, go. your, your mom leaves your dad for a dentist. And my then, mom leaves my dad because my dad is a stoner dingus who lives in the far, on a farm out of town, right? And she's like, we're leaving because I want to be like a woman in the world. Like I want to, I don't want to just be like a, I don't want to just raise these horses and be poor with you in the country. So then my dad gets super pissed, very angry. And then he becomes a little crazy. So then my mom's like, all right, now we're really keeping the kids, right? So then I- How old were you when they separated? Uh, two. Years? Yes. Figured. <laughs> <laughs> two Mark Twains, actually. Okay, so 24 um, inches. 24 inches, exactly. And probably 24 inches, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> my dentist, when I was five, really starts coming on to my mom. Really starts, and my mom's like, I'm straight, I'm straight, Did I'm you straight. you give me some examples of things he would say? She was like, I'm gonna put my fingers in your mouth and work on your teeth. Oh, it's a female dentist. Yeah. Right. So then I had to go to the dentist after knowing this woman had finger banged my mom. How did That's you know weird. that at five? Well, uh, good question. My sister, cunt, remember the cunt before? Can I forget? She, seven years old, or not seven, she must have been, if I was five, what's six plus five? 11. 11. So is she, she was 11. Six, is she still six years older? Yes, she is still. Um, she was outside the door going like this, 
And I, I walked up and I said, what's going on? And she goes, why don't you go in there and find out? Open the door. I thought my dentist was attacking my mom. Turns out it wasn't attacking her. They were having sex. With it, a, interesting. With the what? Nothing. You were what say, were you going to say? <laughs> well, I just, I, it's just like, kind of like, <laughs> it feels like a dentist goes into your mouth, a gynecologist goes into your vagina. Right. And I'm so wondering. That was a private practice. One guy's going crazy. Yeah. One guy's here, the one guy. Oh. He's, he's up there. Mark this, hold on, so they're off the rails. Have the studio laughter or the audience laughter like we did for me, but have one guy and it'll just be this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. Or the sound of a train going off the rails. Help me! Help me! Like that. <laughs> I don't think people would get it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Also, originally that part was going to be taken out. <laughs> But now people, now, now that we're people talking, are people confused. can see the magic. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. No, no, it's okay. I oh, think okay. it's worth keeping in now. But oh, I, I'm just saying that in the future, follow your lead. No. Oh, okay. I'm just kind of talking to you, the audience, and a John Michael to say this is all staying in now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So your mom is getting her uh, cavity checked. Yes. <laughs> and your sister knew it, and she made you go in there. Yeah. Now, when you see your mom getting attacked by the dentist. Do you want to protect your mom? And if so, how? And if not, why not? I didn't want to protect her. <laughs> I didn't want to protect her. I quickly deduced that they were not fighting. They were play fighting. And then later I realized they weren't play fighting. They were I'm confused. Fa oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're using the word for it. When you say deduced, you're talking about like this, like two fingers? Two, the deuce deuce. Right. Yes. Right. So okay. I thought that she was jabbing my mom. Right angrily but she was it was it was for pretend now for play. people listening this is hard to kind of understand especially younger people but this is pre-covid right this R is when people had sex so everything was different right right so then they became gay and your mom just like that they weren't gay and then they became gay she she I never she was the same as me where she was like i like men i like hanging out with men i'm attracted to men and enough women came onto her i read her diary and I, I read it and it said enough women came on to me that I'll just give it a go. Right. And, and then that, that kind of snowballed. Right. But she is bi. Right now, well, if course. she were here, she'd be like. Who would you rather fuck, you or me? I think, I'm pretty sure you, but only because she's related to me. She's my mom. Okay. So, yeah, I know. But it would be a tough, it would be a tough. Is that what you call that's it? That's the tough, only, right? that's the only reason though. Like if you were her son, she would probably be like revolted. Not because you're her son, but because of. Go ahead. Nothing. Please. Just your gender is all, not the, th the not the things you're wearing and the way you present yourself. All right. So it's nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with you. Good. No, no. Good, good. Just that you're her son. Now, what if she wasn't related to either of us? Good question. But she still raised you. She I'm too butch related. for her. I'm too butch. Do you think I'm butch enough? I think you're femme enough. Do you? Yeah. I want to acknowledge my mustache, but I don't know if now's the time. It, there's no mustache, first of well, all. Well, there's something. There's a uh, five o'clock shadow, but there's uh, also a lot of <clears throat> pink and salmon going on. Are you, Where are your eyes going? <laughs> are you being, are you being, am I, am I a fool? I just think. <laughs> am I a fucking fool? No, you're not a fool. You are my mom's type though. Okay. <laughs> nice. But you've seen, you said you went down a rabbit hole of some of my stuff. You've seen me in other situations where I was like tough. Yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> so your mom is getting her cavities filled. Yes. Um, uh, by her deducer. And they break up. The dentist sucks, they, but they're together for a long time, but, but they break up. No, that meant you had to find a new dentist too. Isn't that? That's, Same uh, dentist. You still go to him, her. Her, yes. I always assume dentists are men because of patriarchy. Yeah. So. And but, the ist. What's that? Well, if it was a dentra. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I find that female dentists typically ruin homes. So They do. You still are going to this dentist, but your mom is no longer with her. They're friends, but no. Then she got with Michelle. This is a big deal. Tess, the dentist, pretty insecure. A little overweight. Michelle, Which is fine. very hot. Fuck. Then they get married. Oof. I how, love Michelle. How hot is she? Super hot. Tell me the truth. Is she hot for like, here's a regular person that my mom's She fucking? looks, uh, 
she looks like a mixture of young Madonna and Julianne Moore. How old is Julianne Moore in this mixture? Five years ago. So hot, but not young Julianne Moore. Right, but young Madonna. She is like 40. Yes. Would you rather young Madonna today, Julianne Moore? Never mind. I, oh. already, I already know the answer. Yes. I prefer, Versus today Madonna. I prefer Madonna. Julianne Moore on any spectrum. But I'm saying if you could only have one, Madonna, Julianne Moore, which one is young, which one is today? You would probably take of course. Julianne Moore today. I would take Julianne Moore today, but I'm also saying I would take old Julianne Moore to young Madonna. Does young Madonna mean at any time or does young Madonna mean while she's filming a league of their own? Wow. Cause that means a lot to a person like you. I feel like that's, I know every word to that movie. I wasn't that attracted to her in that movie. We are the members of the, the all American, American team. team. We come from cities near, near and far. far. The other day I said in my house, I go Marla Hooch. And I heard my roommate <laughs> from the other room go Hooch. You know that part? Marla Hooch. Of course. Hooch. Why did I say it twice? <laughs> I think you said, you said league. I said team. You might be right. I'm not positive. Are you we sure? We are the members of the all American league. Yeah. yeah. League makes more we sense. We come from cities near and far. We got the Canadians, Canadians, Irish ones and Swedes. We're all, all for, for one. We're one, one for all. all. We're all Americans. Americans. Or Native American. How? If there's candy in my backpack for Native, Native American. American. <laughs> so, how did your dads meet? Keep saying that. Uh, I'm not done with yours. Um, so, y you said you have three moms. The dentist okay. is one of your moms? No. There's a lot of women in your life. Been there. Then... <sighs> There's technically four because there's my mom's, my dad's widow who mar they married, but she, she doesn't talk to me anymore because I said on a podcast that she might have killed him. And she saw that? She did. I have a voicemail of her saying, Jordan, could you please not um, tell people on a podcast that I killed your father? And then I have a voicemail right after that of Ian Fidance going, Jordan, can you please not tell people that I killed your father on the podcast? It's gold. Wait a minute. And now, so she reached out to you and wanted to resolve it. So she didn't. She just didn't stop. want to resolve it. She, I'm mad at her because my, me and my dad built a house together. And in the will, he said Jordan get and Jamie, the sister, gets the house after my, the woman dies. She didn't. She sold the house before dying, so we don't get the house. Oh, she. But I she built that house. Away. No, she hasn't died yet. She hasn't died yet. She sold it before dying. But she then, hasn't died. But that means you get you no. get the money. No money, zero money. How are you doing financially? I'm okay. How much money do you, did you make last year? I have no idea. Really? Should I? Yes. How do you have no idea? You don't even have an idea? Well, I guess my friends, my friends did the math, probably 80. Your friends did the math. What does that mean? Well, they care. I never pay attention to these things. If I'm making, I'm in the headlining moment where I'm making like three to four grand a weekend. Not great. But then I make rent at the cellar during the week. So what does that mean? What is my rent? Like, what does it mean at the cellar? How many days a week are you at the cellar? Every day I'm not on the road. Really? Mm -hmm. And what what does the seller pay? Is it a fixed rate or is it based off of the ticket sales? Fixed rate. What is the, the rate? Is it different per comedian? No. Would, you, I, would like, you let our audience know what the seller pays their comics? During the weekdays, it's like 50 a spot. Yeah. But you'll get many spots. And then the weekends, it's double. So it's a hundred as well. So not not that much, but you're doing it all the time. Mm. And how long are the spots there? Fifteen minutes. You know, I've never done the cellar. I think I'm going to try and do it this time. Bobby Kelly said that he'll make an introduction for me. Really? Yeah. I love Bobby Kelly so me too. much. Man, he's the best. He's great. He makes me want to have a kid, and I don't want to have kids because of uh, Maximus, his kid, or because he looks like a big baby. Right. I want to push him out of my vagina. Huh. I thought it was so funny on stage last night. I said, "What if instead of what if I didn't want to have a kid, but I just wanted to." I really just wanted to push a huge orb out of my vagina and just rip in front of public. Like, that's what I wanted to just be on a table. Like, that's what I dreamed of. If, Nobody laughed. You know what might be a fun idea <laughs> is if you ever do have a baby, you record it and then you, you open the clip with that thing and then you show the thing of the baby, but you animate instead of the baby coming out, just an orb. That would be cool. I did accidentally open up a video of my friend's sister giving birth traumatized me. I can see it right you now. You keep walking stay. into people getting their vaginas worked on. Yeah. Is that something that- I've seen that a lot, actually. For somebody who feels that they should be gay. Yeah. But, no, I don't feel that way. Everybody else does. Well- I just feel like I'm a capable woman. Right. Which is gay. 
No, I think all women are capable and no, beautiful. No, 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 no. There's incapable women. You ever seen? You ever seen a woman? Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if people are trans. I think they might have just parallel parked well. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, I feel like a man when I pull. Sometimes you meet a woman and you're like, yeah, you're just less being a man. Being masculine just means being good at hand-eye coordination and doing difficult things. They become gay because the clitoris is a difficult thing to work on. You know, I find less that the clitoris in, is a difficult thing to work on as much as so clitorises and um, G-spots and vaginas as a whole are so different from one another that once you feel like you mastered one, you have to relearn every, yes. like, you know, like you haven't ridden a bike in a long time. It's easy to remember. A bike would be a penis because they're all the same right. thing. But a clitoris would be like, yeah, I learned how to serve a Rubik's Cube three by three, but this one's an eight by eight. It's like, it's a completely different game. Oh, each clitoris is different? Oh, I'm going to say no to you. I'll tell you why I know why it is. Because first of all, I've been with more clitorises than you and your mom put together. That's impossible. My mom. How many women do you think your mom has been with? Oh my God. More than three? Way more than three. Oh, well then, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Two, technically, with my hands. And oh, then, yeah, if you call your hands women. My no, God, no, 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 I, mean, I mean, I only went down on one girl, but oh. I used my hands on two of them. So was, two women total. I was thinking about that in the college years where a guy would just go down on you and that was it. Those as opposed, were the days. It, that was it as opposed to what? Well, I think they were nervous about their penises, so they were just like, I'll go down on you. And you're like, that's great. Honey, and a day goes by where I ain't nervous about my penis. But I don't let that get in the way. <laughs> You know, I made a decision once. It started with comedy and it's led into my penis where I get scared and I would like make an excuse and not want to go up on stage or something. And I said, I'm allowed to be scared. Hell, I'm supposed to be scared. Yeah. Be scared. Accept it. Just don't let fear make your decisions for you. But sometimes they make your decisions for you because your dick doesn't work. But there are ways you could handle that. And I've talked about this on this podcast every third episode probably. But you just say, listen, I'm nervous. I don't know if I'll be able to get this to work right now. Yeah. Um. I would love to learn your Rubik's Cube and maybe suck my soft cock and see, you know what? Yeah. We'll keep it in. But And you're with women who are who are supportive of that. See, I'm a woman where I'm, <laughs> I go like that into their, I look into their penis and I go. <laughs> okay. First of all, nothing would get me harder. <laughs> Second of all, I don't want to talk too much on that <laughs> okay. because, because I think it might be disrespectful um, because I told you my audiences, I'm only working to woke, woke audiences. And that's why. I Is think, that true? Oh yeah. I believe it with the fig plant. Yeah. Why did you look me up? Did um, you know? Also, who? also uh, I thought you were gay. It's the only reason I asked you on. Yeah. And we like to, we don't call them figs anymore. We call them homosexuals. Oh, I so, see. I see. Um, you uh, were telling me that your mother has been with so many women. How many? <laughs> Here's the deal. This episode is sponsored by FitBod. I've been trying to get fit, I'm trying to get my, trying to get my arms and my shoulders and my back into that V. And then I'm also trying to have that go right down to the littlest ass I could possibly have. Just a little flat ass and little skinny legs. Here's how this thing works. You pick a fitness goal, select your equipment, and FitBot will create a custom workout program for you. Which means if you're going to the gym, you could use gym equipment. If you're at home, etc. The app switches up your exercise to avoid overtraining or burnout while keeping your workouts fresh and fun. Learn new movements the right way with over 1,400 demonstration videos. The app is very easy to use and the videos are extremely helpful. I have looked up on YouTube, especially when I was first starting out, I would just ask a lot of people at the gym, but you always wanna watch them. And a full year of FitBot is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. There's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBot today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash Tyso. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash T-Y-S-O. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm aware of how people might receive me. Now, am I perfect at this? Probably. But that's because I've gone through so much therapy. I've actually done so much therapy that I'm considering being a therapist. A lot of people think this podcast is a therapy podcast. They're like, Rick, your comedy podcast is not funny at all. It's boring as f That's because comedy, dude, is for the 90s. Now it's about being in touch with who you are. And once you find who you are, then you could use your voice for comedy or for drama. Okay or whatever you need to. Finding a therapist is difficult. That's why I think BetterHelp is such a good option because they match you with a therapist in under 48 hours. You don't have to go anywhere. You could do it from home. Convenience is a huge part of this because you wanna find something that's sustainable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso today to get 10% of your first month. That's BetterHelp, 
H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. What's that, Jordan? You were going to tell me something about something? Okay, I'm excited to hear more. <laughs> this is what I mean. I want to be able to control myself. Don't take away Stop. from another comedian getting laughs yes. and saying, it's not that you're funny, I just have a problem. <laughs> just so you know, every time I'm laughing, it's not you. It's I have a thing. I have a problem. Okay. My mom it's kicking in right now, has by been the way. with a thousand. I know mine too. I'm sparkly. I'm glitter zone. Are you glitter zone? I don't. Uh, I'm sleeping here tonight. <laughs> that's, I, I, I have to, you know, I have to make some phone calls. But I'm if you need sweaty. a place, do you need me? I put the AC on. No, it's great. It's good. It's the coffee sweat. Are you comfortable? I'm really comfortable. Yeah. I'm feeling good. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, Are good, you having good. a good time? Yeah, I'm having a great time. Yesterday, I was really yipped up. I went for a run. What? Just making sure. Oh, you're right. I'm going. My mom then got with Michelle. She became my second mom, ultimate mom. So, so, Mich so your mom, mean lady. She's more of a dad. Please, for the for all intents and purposes. Oh, okay. And that's not a blanketed statement. We have fun in this podcast <laughs> montage. Do we have a you? Well, that's you know. So if I open this right now, you'd be mad. What to do? Right, I don't want to. That's a blanket statement, isn't it? Oh, a blanket statement. So your mom uh, uh, goes to the dentist um, and then um, has the dentist go to town on her. Now she leaves this dentist because she's overweight, which I think is fine and all women are beautiful. <laughs> then she that meets, is why she left her. Then she Just so you know, at the time when she left the overweight dentist, I was huge. When she left the overweight dentist is a good name for your next special. Yeah. Yeah, my first, but I'm about to have a special called Critical Folly. You like that? That's name? the name of my special. No, it's not. I could have done that and made that believable. I don't think so. I could. We've, Critical could, Folly? Could you be open to letting me show you how I can make you believe it? Okay, go ahead. Just play it real. <clears throat> okay. All right, so tell me you have a special and what's. I'm going to make, I'm putting out a special called Critical Folly. Okay. What? No, I, I know you're joking. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. I, um, but go ahead. Do you really have a special coming out? Yeah. Critical Folly. Okay. Well, we'll both have a special called Critical Folly. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Cut to a clip. Uh, put my Critical Folly trailer here. I know that you saw this, obviously. because No, nope, right back. there, I would stop believing you. Right there. I saw a little, there was a little raise. I can yeah, see it. Yeah, because I know you're being playful. No, I can see. Sure. We'll both have it. That's I, fine. I can see it. Great. I see it. Great. I see it. Good. So, okay. Your special is called Critical Folly. And yeah. what's it about? Being a Jewish man in uh, New Jersey. See, you're copying me, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a special coming out. Did you film it yet? No. Do you know what jokes you're going to do? Yeah. Let me hear, do 10 minutes. Uh, dude, we were just in Dallas and this guy behind the, at the hotel was like, you guys are comics. Do a quick 10. And my feature goes, you, so you mean like nine? Yeah. <laughs> it's like insane in the North. It's like, do a quick, d tell me a joke. And there in Dallas, they're like, do it, do your full Did you do anything for the person? No, I was furious. I had just gotten into a massive fight with a British family at the airport. Huge. Security broke us up. What happened? Split us. I have rage issues. We know. And uh, <laughs> this piece of shit kid put his jacket on my laptop as it went through. So my laptop, and I was late for my- Is plane. your laptop in a basket? Uh, they don't have baskets at the, you mean a bin? They don't have bas baskets. Oh, so, you, so you knew what I meant. I did, but okay. I pictured an orphanage immediately okay. when you said basket. So a bin basket then? is crazy to say. I mean, how much you get bins screamed in your mouth to say basket is. I don't get bins screamed. Are in you my Canadian? Mouth. You might be Native American. Honduran. Definition of basket. It is wicker and woven. All baskets are wicker and woven. Then why do they call it a wicker basket? Why not just call it a basket? They don't call it a wicker basket. Yeah, they do. They say, "What's this basket made of?" And you say, "Wicker." A stiff, a stiff container that is used for carrying or storing objects. With holes in it. Baskets are made from thin strips of material such as straw, plastic, or wire woven together. Yes. So woven works, but not always wicker. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a sponsorship for just baskets, you know, or the show baskets. That are all bins, solid <laughs> bins, <laughs> the container store. Yes, yes. Um, 
anyway, this piece of shit kid put his jacket on the thing. Was They're it like, in a bin? It was in a bin. It was flat in a bin, as it should be, open so that they can scan it. Mm -hmm. And then I see his thing get gnarled up in mine, and I see them hook it and put it on the thing. It goes through, and they go, we have to pull this. They check the jacket, and they give it to the kid. And I was like, please don't put it at the beginning of security. I really have to go. Please don't do that. Right. Just bomb check it with your little wipey swipey. And he goes, sorry, we have to put it through. So I turn to the kid, and I say, keep your shit in your How old is the kid? 19. Okay. I say, keep Young it adult. tall. Yeah. Young adult, six foot four gangly. Right. I then say, keep your shit in your own bin. And I turn back. I receive a tap on my shoulder. I turn around small, what looks to be a five foot nine Boston man, mm -hmm. well-dressed, wealthy. But then he speaks and he says, excuse me, it was your laptop that get pulled. Don't talk to my son that way. Um, I hear the British accent. I'm furious immediately. I'm with him. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I lose my mind. Mm -hmm. I say, it was your kid's piece of shit jacket that was on my laptop. Right. I mean, and without that, da, 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 da. And then I say, and then the guy keeps- Without coming. that, da, 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 da. Oh, I say, without that, I would be on the way to my plane. I'm late. And that kid, your kid doesn't know how to put his shit away. So then it gets on not somebody right. else's shit. And I was like, and even if it is my thing, your kid's shit is on my shit. I'm telling him to keep it to himself. And I was like, and also, how come his dad is coming up to me right now? And then he starts getting really pissed and yelling at me. And I start saying, I was like, you're going to make your son weak. He's standing right over there. Why doesn't he stand up to me? And then the father, I see a look of recognition. Like, yes, I am making my son weak. And then the mom comes up and goes, oh, really? And I said, yes, really? Your son is go is standing over there muttering something and he can't stand up to me himself. He needs mommy and daddy to do it. You're making him weak. Seven black security guards are laughing hysterically over here. It's yeah, it's totally fine. It's fine. We accept it. They're like, ow. They're <laughs> laughing. That almost was okay? really bad. Yeah, I dodged it because I'm a ninja. But he, Careful. they're laughing. You're right. They're laughing hysterically. Mm -hmm. And then. Now, are you angry or are you also, are you a bit performative with this? Like you're feeling this. Like, are you enjoying it? I'm the happiest I've been in years. Right. So you're, this doesn't feel like real confrontation to you. This feels like play. Oh, it's real. No, 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 I'm not saying it isn't confrontation. I'm saying, like, do you have cortisol and adrenaline yes. running through your body? Cortisol, adrenaline, and a half smile. But whenever I'm in a confrontation, unless I'm in danger, I'm having the best time of my life. Mm -hmm. That is how, that's what feels best to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling this man that his son is going to be weak. They are getting louder and louder, closer and closer, until finally a security guard was like, all right, enough, 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 and pulls us apart. And I'm literally going, weak. I was like, look up Jordan <laughs> Peterson. He's going to be weak. And and I really created like a force majeure, force majeure. Have you seen that movie? Um, I learned the book. Well, basically they're gonna have a very awkward time because I did unveil the truth. They did all see it, mm -hmm. that the son was hiding and couldn't stand up to me even though he was twice the height of his parents and the parents were fighting for him. And it was embarrassing as all these people watched the dad be like, don't talk to my son that way. Mm -hmm. And it was, it felt great. I have some questions. Yes, go ahead. Um, now, these questions, I don't mean to be leading. Please. Um, I do have opinions and judgments. That mm -hmm. is not here yet. I have, need some information first. Okay, lead me um, by my druthers. <laughs> but what I am going to be asking is more going to be on the, the level of devil's advocate. Have you seen that movie with Keanu Reeves? Yes, I have. Oh, I have. So. Love him. Matrix, favorite movie of all time. You said gold, gold, gold. that um, with all the aggression that's been going out and the swear words and the stuff, you almost, you didn't do this. You didn't do this with your body posture, but you did this with your energy and your tone of voice, which was, I was telling the truth. I was telling right. the truth. Do you believe that telling the truth um, is the holy grail? And as long as you're telling the truth, what you're, what you're doing is okay? I am that way, except, I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm very Sam harris -y in that way. I don't know. He's very, Sam Harris is very much like tell the truth constantly. Okay. But- there's one thing that I can't do it with. And that's when somebody says, do you want to see a tour of the house? I never You'll want the tour. You'll always say yes. But I'll always say yes. Interesting. I don't want the tour. Okay. I don't want the grand tour. I want you to say rummage through the fridge. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Bathroom's there. Mm -hmm. I don't want the tour, but I do always say yes. I didn't ask when you came in. Would you, you did not. Would you like to see the place? I do not. How could you do it now? Well, because I already had confessed. Right. Isn't that interesting? that we could be our honest self as long as we go through the confession. Maybe the Catholics had something to that. It's true. Mar or Mark Norman, Norm MacDonald in a special said, just do it with sarcasm. Remember? Did you watch that? Mm -mm. 
where he says, you can tell the truth no matter what. If you do it like, yes, I'd love to see the tour. Right. Or no, I don't want to see the tour is more what it'd be. Right. So you're telling the truth, but. I, I, I also am someone who tells the truth all the time. Really? Your posture is, is bad and you look bad. It's bad. But I do, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I don't believe that that, like a lot of people say, what? I, I, I was telling the, like someone said, you were being mean. And like what? I was telling the truth. And those two things aren't mutually exclusive, uh, but they're also not always together. Like the, the, it, Well, if I had chased after that man and said, hey, your son is weak shouldered because, you know, and, and is a pussy, that would be one thing. But that man came up to me and said, don't talk to my son that way. And I said, why are you talking to me? Why right. isn't he talking to me? Now, so here's where I don't have a strong take because I get what you're doing. Yeah. I get your thing. Yeah. And I think it's hysterical. Thank you. Okay. So did the security guards, which is all I'm trying to impress. Right. Security guards is, is basically like when you're on set, you want the crew to laugh. Yes. Yeah. You want yeah. the servers at the club to laugh. Yes. Yeah. But you also want the 19 year old boy who sounds like he has autism. He doesn't. He was, was he muttering. He was going, don't you have somewhere to be? Yeah, Aren't but, you late? But and the I was way like, you yes. said he's to the side and just muttering to himself, maybe he was stimming. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't schizophrenia. But if he was autistic, would you maybe have not wanted to do that? If the dad had said he's autistic, yeah. I would have said, I'm so sorry. And that's the problem. Why are we going to treat the autistic well, people actually, differently? actually that happened at a show where I ripped into a kid and then the mom came up to me after the show and she goes, you ripped into my kid and he's autistic and he's like a big fan of yours. And I was like, it, he's okay. I was like, I could tell that he was okay. I don't really go in on people unless I can right. tell they're, they're down. And then she was like, well, he's autistic. So that was painful for him and he wouldn't let you yeah, see it. And then masking. he came up to me and he said, I'm really sorry for my mom. I am a little off, but I loved it. And I said, see, right. bitch. And I grabbed her head and I said, see, Look See, at this is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we put her head into the yeah. into the wall and just kind of scraped her nose yeah. a little. I'll get, I mean, I like living in New York because you can get in fights as much as, I mean, I, yeah, my mom was on the phone the other day as a man passed me and he goes, he muttered something and I was like, what? And he muttered something and I was like, I'm on the phone. And he goes, well, fuck you then. And I just spun on my heels with my mom in my AirPods and just proceeded to let, I was like, mm. fuck me. And just yeah. me and this man screaming with my mom going, what are you doing? <laughs> stop it, stop it, Jordan. I have a I have a switchblade in my back pocket because I get in so much fights. Let me see it. Do you want to see it? Do you pull it out ever? No. As a threat, never once? Oh, it's open. That's yeah, careful, Jesus. Are those legal in New York? No. So are you sure you want to show this? Even though technically we're not in New York right now. I, I'm willing to show it. Although, yeah. Um, do you, as a kid, did you have one of those, but it was a comb? Oh, I didn't. I did. So I you know how did? to handle that. Yeah. I want the kind that comes out. I like a lightsaber. Yes. Right. I also want like a taser, not a taser, a stun gun for myself, not for other people. Have you stunned yourself? You have a stun gun? I'm going to stun you right now. Really? When she said you're on a taser, remember that? We'll show this. Whose is that? That's yours? Keep it by my bed in case anyone comes in and wants to fuck me. Nice. Because you like being tased when you have sex. What this switchblade was given to me by a, a man in Bloomington, Mr. Wachowski. Thank you so much. Wait, hold on. What did you say? I said this uh, switchblade was given to me by a man named Mr. Wachowski in Bloomington, Indiana. Let me and, hear you say that sentence in the most racist uh, voice impression you could do. Okay. Oh man. The pro okay. This 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 knife was given to me by. I'm doing like old Southern, deep like a really ignorant, uneducated black child of um the the Bayou. Now this knife here. No, this, never mind. No, stop. Okay. I don't. I don't. Don't. I don't like to do Bayou stuff. The, you know that restaurant that they have in there. Blue Bayou. Um, yeah, well, for many years, but then I discovered it and I ate there. I think it's called Blue Bayou and I loved it. You did? Yeah. Orphaned. Orphaned in a swamp. What? Very good. I like it too. <laughs> so you got that because you uh, you get into fights or you worry that you may be getting into fights. The switchblade. 
No, he was, he just gave it to me, but now I have it because it's been getting a little crazy on the trains. Have you noticed? I take Uber black. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like the trains because that's where good comedians get material. Right. I, I, did, I did take the train the other day. Did you? Yeah, and boy, was my arm tired. I was masturbating, but uh, I did take the train the other day. Uh, the train makes me, um, I get a little anxious on the train these days. I used to love the train. Yeah. I used to love the train. Yeah. Um, and then COVID. How are you, by the way? After COVID? I had COVID nine times or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could tell. Yeah. And, uh, and ever, ever since COVID, um, my OCD got pretty bad. Not as bad as it was as a kid, but it got bad. And then I'm back to good. But still, the train, like, I'll take it. I was on it the other day. I just don't, I, it's like, I, don't, I feel like I'm ready. And the whole time on the train, I'm just ready to fight. Not that I want to fight. It's one of these. That's why you get one of those. I have, um, I don't like to disclose what I keep on me, but let's just say. It's your penis. Um, have you seen Con Air? Yeah. <laughs> That's not where I thought you were going. <laughs> you That's Nicholas? not where I thought you were going. Where do you think I was going? I don't know. Lethal Weapon 3? No. Maybe... Uh, Fast and the Furious 2? Okay, I could do Fast and the Furious 2. Rush Hour? 1. 1. Man, Chris Tucker, huh? Unbelievable. I don't Fifth think... Fifth Element? What are we doing? I don't think people realize. He was on Epstein's planet. Everyone was on Epstein's planet. But Chris, come on. I didn't know he was, actually. I know. I know it's Bill Gates was. Who cares? Dude, I can't stand what's happening you in the world. You had bad OCD? I was crippled with OCD. Gulp, gulp, gulp. I still have it pretty bad. Yeah. Not cleanliness, obviously. No, no. You don't seem, and I mean this in the worst way, very clean. I'm not clean. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm a raccoon. Yeah, you're the type of person who like motorcycle brakes and you're like, I'll just put it in the driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know who I am, which I hate? Girl who builds fire. You know what I mean? Where the person who's like, I, I'll build the fire and they never let people help. And they're like, I'll do it. That's, I hate that quality trait. And I am. It's that. great that you could build it. It's interesting that you no. don't let other people help. I, you know, I don't like that. Whoever builds the fire first is the biggest dingus, in my opinion. Whoever goes for the sticks and is like, this is my jurisdiction. Wait, but that's you. I know. So you, why, why, why? I've given it up, but that's who I am how, inside. How many times did you build the fire and not let other people build the fire? 19. W what were you doing? Camping? Yeah, or just building the fire at my house or- Like in a fireplace or outside? In a fireplace, in a wood stove. Right. Just the pride, fire pride is gross to me. So you found your dad curled up on a couch, huh? Mm-hmm. How? With the fire. That's one of my bits. We had a fire going in the fireplace and a-, and a The dentist. And the <laughs> episode of The West Wing playing. And we were like, you died from a case of the cozies. And a pile of weed. He died from a heart attack, I think. He smokes two, two packs a day. Set me up to 24 hours before you found him. Where are you? Where is he? What's going on? I didn't find him. His wife did and then called my sister. I refused to see his body. They all tried to get me to see it. I was like, fuck no. You'd rather build a fire than see your dad's dead body. I was body. busy building a fire, yeah. To burn his ashes in. I mean, his body. Do you miss your dad? Were you close? We were close. I do miss him, yeah. Now that I'm, I'm going through a breakup, I miss him now. Because you know, it's nice to have a dad to be like, fuck it. Fuck that guy. Although my mom is doing that role really well. And she's a lesbian, so that's nice. But that's harder because she's like, just date women. Whereas right. my dad is like... Keep dating men and I'm sorry for your loss. Well, he just does the thing where he like quotes us, you know, he's like, you know, another one bites the dust, kid. Like it, right. he makes it more simple. Whereas my mom's like, he's emotionally unintelligent and his eyes are too close together. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, well, yes, but... He says things like Starman or something to you, maybe your dad too. Yeah. Other lyrics. Yeah. yeah. Little Bruce, a little bit of the boss. Oh, I was thinking more of the thing from Labyrinth. Oh, the thing? Are you talking about David Bowie that you called the a singer earlier? That made me feel like I was in the Labyrinth. Have you seen the Labyrinth? Uh, the one with the singer? With David Bowie? I've seen parts of it. With the singer. Yeah. It's crazy to call David Bowie a singer. Well, that's why I referenced Starman. You said the, with the singer? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I say the Labyrinth. You live and a you sheltered said, life. Huh? <laughs> you live a sheltered life. I don't live a sheltered life. The craziest thing you ever heard was me saying, oh, the guy with the, thing, with the singer? I think that's more crazy than a man screaming at voices in his head, somebody going, have you seen The Labyrinth? Oh, the one with the singer? That's crazy. That's like me saying, have you seen Cinderella, the non-animated one? Oh, with the singer? That's reasonable. The Labyrinth. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. What? Have you seen the movie, uh, have you seen Kazam? Oh, the one, the guy, the with rapper? The Blue Genie? 
Shaq. Not Shaq. Sinbad. Oh, Aladdin is a blue genie. Shaq is Kazam. Sinbad. Shaq is Kazam. Was Shazam. Sinbad played a blue genie in Shazam, according to the Berenstein Bear Apocalypse. Not that's not what it's called. It's called a Malcolm X. You know what? I'll tell you what it's called. Let me Shazam it. <laughs> nope, it was it was Shaq. What is it called? The Malcolm X exhibit? The mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela effect. Yeah, the Bernstein Bears. Yes. Which I never, if, if you told me it was called the Bernstein Bears, I would have said, sure. Right. If you told me it was called the Bernstein Bears, I would have said, sure. And if you were to tell me it's the Mandela effect, I would be like, may he rest in peace. Right. But everybody's talking about who did what. But and Shazam and Kazam is a big one. You remember Shaq. <clears throat> I remember Sinbad as a blue genie. I do remember that. Kazam right. mm -hmm. and Shazam. Mm -hmm. Shazam is, is, the, is an app. Right. But go back in your mind. Do you imagine Sinbad as a blue genie? No. No, not at all? No. He's right there. No, I, I think of Sinbad from House Guest. Wow. I think of him as the thing that never happened. What do you mean? It just it never occurred. He never was a blue genie, but half of the world believes it. Yeah, why never? I don't see him as a blue genie. Yeah, you're on the right side of history. That's why I play the woke crowds. That's right. We'll be right black. Back! <laughs> Am I talking too much? I don't think so. Am I? Definitely not. Definitely not. Really? No. Oh, I feel the other way, so we're good. Okay. Isn't that the best when you're eating food with somebody and you're like, did I eat all this? And they're like, no, I am so full. And you're like, thank God, because I thought I ate all, everything. Oh, I don't connect with that. Oh, really? No, no, I don't want to Me share neither. off the same plate as somebody. Oh, you're not a tapas fan? I mean, no, but if I did, like, I'll Fuck get mine. Fuck tapas. I want my own entree. I want what I want. Yeah. What are we going to share? Well, you don't have to share. That's the thing. You could also say no to a tour of the house. I can't. I can't do that. I, I can't set boundaries, my therapist would say. New you, therapists love them. You know, what's interesting. For somebody who not only is okay with confrontation, but so candidly admits to seeks it, I wonder if that's filling the space for you because you're unable to set the boundaries that really matter. Because the yes. laptop thing that's annoying. Oh, okay. What if we took some of that energy and that, that confidence in speaking up for yourself in moments where it feels... Uh, urgent and necessary now and instead recognize those patterns of things that make you uncomfortable so you could establish them so you don't get triggered speak on that i that would involve standing up to people that i'm not willing to stand up to i'm willing to stand up to a small british man well that's that is the that is kind of the 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 metaphor here your unwillingness to stand up for to certain people yes is really an unwillingness to stand up for yourself right exactly why is it that you're so willing to stand up against a man on the street because you have a switchblade but you can't look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I know how to make myself safe. Because I don't. You know, they say life starts outside <laughs> of your comfort zone. Yeah. This is what my therapist said yesterday, that the next man I date has to nauseate me. That's what he said. Can you believe it? Well, I am taken, <laughs> but I have some tricks. <laughs> That's what he said to me. He said, you're not allowed to date somebody unless they make you sick. Because I'm only attracted to people who I can't have boundaries with. What is an example of makes you sick? Because I disagree unless nice he's being people, hyperbolic. Nice people. Gotcha. If, so, they, if they're nice and they're into me, I get a little nauseated and I can't be with them. But if they're not into me, then I date them for two years and they break my heart every other day. Have you had any healthy uh, no. romantic relationship? No. Nope. Never? Never once. Do you have an idea of what that could look like? Take your top off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I don't. I think I see it. I mean, two of my moms have it. Donna and Michelle have it. But yeah, are, are they still, are they together or is it like an open? They're no, all... no, they're together. My mom, biological one is alone. Shocker. Again. Right. Shocker. Yeah. And. Oh, I did. I did it wrong. I did a dog. Yeah. <laughs> no typical man. Dog is also good. Yeah. Go in both holes like a bowling ball. Grab it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Touch the fingers together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, I bowl with just these two fingers. No thumb. Do you really? Yeah. Cut Some people really do that. I really like bowling. I got really into it over the pandemic. Cocaine and bowling, same time. What are we doing? You look like you love those things. I love. I quit cocaine, but I can't stop bowling. Can't stop. Can't I love bowling. I love bowling. You got your own bowling shoes. I have my own bowling ball. Although my ex put it back on the took. 
put it on the lanes. He is a manager of a bowling alley in New York. You know, put you, it back on the lanes. You dated man. a manager of a bowling alley. Yeah. Man. Also a comic. Gotcha. And yeah, I usually date comics who are combo something else because I need a capable person. Like the last one was a carpenter comedian. Now, nothing against comedians that also have other jobs because that's how it works until you're fortunate enough if you are right, to not have another job. But that does imply, at least for the time being, that they are unable to support themselves just with comedy. Now, that doesn't mean they're not funny enough or good enough, but at a certain time, if this keeps happening, maybe it is that you're dating comedians that have yet to find their voice. Yes. And how could they appreciate yours if they don't have one themselves? We'll be right back. Black! <sighs> you do sound, it is crazy. You sound a lot like my therapist. He is the Stutz of New York. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do. He's the guy that everybody sees. Bobby Kelly sees him. We have mm -hmm. the same therapist. I've done a lot of uh, self-reflection and studying and learning, and I am I'm probably the What's most enlightened. What's your attachment type? Um, what? Anxious attachment. Are you anxious? Yeah, anxious attachment. Let me ask you this. If somebody's like, I want to end it, do you go, okay, that's totally fine, and you run? Or do you go, no, 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 please, no. I mean, those are both very hyperbolic examples. I think if I had to pick one. There's only one example. Those are two. Those are two. Oh, two examples two of what you could do. possibilities, yeah. Like, like if somebody gave you um, chicken figures, would you eat them all in a second? Or would you be like, ugh, barf, no if way. If I was like, if I, if, if, if uh, I was your girlfriend and I said, I think we just need to take a, a few days. I just need a little space. Yeah, there would be. the. Um, so I am very in touch with, with myself and I am aware. And there's the, you know, the logical and the emotional side of us. And um, the logical one is very logical and understands the patterns of, of my feelings and how I felt this way before. And it's not specifically this person. And I get this. But there is sometimes the emotional side is so overpowering that even though I know what's yes. happening in that example, at least at first, yes, I will be like, I had a girlfriend um, whom of which I was writing a letter that I probably wasn't going to send her, maybe, but like getting my thoughts out, like I wanted to break up with her. Yes. This wasn't working. This was not a healthy relationship. It was, um, it was an unhealthy. I've, I'm friends with a few of my ex girlfriends, and the ones I'm not, everything's great. I just we don't talk to yes, each other. Yes, yes, same. There's one ex that was a little bit of a toxic. Let's make sure we're going toxic thing, uh, and that was the one I was trying to get out of. And as I was writing the letter, she called me, and she's like, Whoa. "I think we need to talk." Uh, she, we lived in different states at the time. She said, I think we need to talk. You're somebody who writes letters and that Burn me. And is really it. impulsive um, to me. No. You're uh, sitting there with a quill uh, and I want it I mean, over. I'm having weird deja vu. <laughs> um, really, I am about the story and being called out like yeah. that. Um, maybe it happened on a podcast. I don't remember talking about this. Ever. Um, <laughs> no, I've talked about it. but You're having deja vu about it? Am I playing no, into it now? No, even like the quill. like Because I'm, I'm remembering like, like to me, that instinct was, well, I didn't have pens. I mean, like, did I say that before? That you didn't have pens. Oh, I see. But just needing to make an excuse, like a joke excuse about the joke that was made to me. Oh, uh, yeah. If you, anybody, I think if you say to any comedian that you were writing a letter to a girl, immediately the roast is. Do you not write the f or journal or use pens? Not to write to people. It wasn't like a letter that I was going to write to her and mail her. You which, were by journaling the way, been about fine. the breakup. I was, that I wouldn't have been fine. Can we discuss that? I had a lot of thoughts about this thing. Like, I don't want to, what would I say to her? Yes. If I were to even bring this up, you know, like here's maybe what I would say to have an idea of a game plan. And then if I decided to talk with her, I had kind of got my thoughts out. Yes. Whiteboard. You know, any kind of board. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this happened with Basket, a white one. Bin. Um, yeah. Woven whiteboard. <laughs> and she called me and she's like, when you talk, and I was like, yeah, here's a great end. Like, I, I think so too. Oh, and I now know. we're talking and things have not been great. And I'm like, I know, I think we should like maybe to step aside. I'm like, At, yes. And it was nice. And like, I agree. And then the next day I was like, wait, she wanted to break up with me. And that kind of fucked me up a little bit. Right. But did you say, no, 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 no. Yeah. I tried to get her back. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I and I also like, I also knew that like, I shouldn't be getting her back. I of course. I just, there was a part of me and this is like, it's still the, the hardest part to like beat, which is. I'm okay not being with this person. Yeah. I shouldn't be with this person. I hate that this person who used to see me in such a great way now doesn't see me in that way. I, I must restore. Do you think it's the OCD in us? 
I think it's a little OCD. I think there's some obsess- obsessive uh, behaviors that have to do with it, but I don't think that's an OCD thing. I think that's an anxious attachment thing. Let me tell you what happened. Okay. The other day, run into my ex. Did you apologize? <laughs> Did you say sorry for running? He was wearing a helmet. He was the fat man on the train. Mm. Ran into my ex, the same ex who broke up with me because of the helmet laughter. And he... I saw him and I immediately said, oh, 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 and then I ran away, okay? That's not what I expected to do. Right. What I expected to do is be like, how's it going? But instead I went, oh, and then I ran, okay? So, um, and then- That's something like Miranda would do in Sex in the City. It not, was- Not and the city. Is it in? Berenstain Se- Bears. I think it's actually Sex and the City. It is and. It is and, okay, yes. great. And then, yes, obviously I'm Miranda. Let's not be crazy. Although the other day I was a Charlotte. My friend told me that she had sex with the FedEx guy and I was like- that's disgusting. That's disgusting. And I remember there's an episode where Samantha blows her FedEx guy. Oh, yeah. And Charlotte it judges her. Actually, Charlotte doesn't. Carrie, Carrie judges her. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And also she said she wasn't judging her. She was just taken aback. But then she admits she was judging a little bit. That's fine. You think you're a burger, don't you? Are you a bit of a burger? I am that's so me- sorry. No. I. He's the, that's the worst character can I tell in the you show. Me? I'm pro burger. I want a burger. I can deal with a burger. Burger's the best. Big is not the best. We know no, that. No, he's not. Aiden is, and still not for me, but this is what we, these are our options. Burger is so funny. Burger is the most insecure person. Just, he, he, he recognized, first of all, he had a motorcycle. Second of all, when he hits her, when she hits him with the shoe and he goes, what is this, a pet? That's hilarious. That's the funniest part of the first whole of all, show. First of all, it's not hilarious. It's hilarious. Sure. You laugh easily. I do. Okay. I do. Um, it was either that or when that person farted in the yoga class, I have to marry them. That's not enough. I think somebody did fart in the yoga class in Sex and City. Either way, Berger, he had insecurities because he hadn't found his voice. She had. That's what I'm attracted to. nothing more. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Mm -hmm. To me- Aiden is repulsive to me because he's too loving. Yeah, no, I I got, Aiden wouldn't be for me and isn't the way I would behave. But as far as like, what is, so I am a person who believes so strongly in your partner needing to be a safe space for you but not being the person that gives you the safety. You have to have yes. that yourself. Yes. But you could surround yourself with people where you just intuitively like, this feels safe, this feels comfortable. I could tell you about things. I could admit my mistakes. If I did something that you might upset you, we could figure it out. But like, you're, it's, it's a, we're, we're humans. We yeah. talk. Safety. Safety. And that is the, to have somebody that is able to be there and like hear you Yes. Is the antithesis of somebody who's insecure. Right. So that doesn't mean you have to have somebody like you're saying with Aiden, who's just so nice and is going to do your floors for you and is everything. And honey, you know, you still want a bad, I'm a bad boy. No, the, no, the talking isn't good. The talking I can't. Yeah. Well, you're not going to. The like, the like, uh, yeah, let's talk about it and get to the bottom of it. No, there has to be conflict. And the yeah. conflict only happened. There has to be a wall. The guy I'm dating has to wall up. Yeah. So you're making jokes or you're being serious? I'm being serious. Right. And you think that's a, you like that about yourself or it's something you'd like to fix? Because it, you could have it mystery. It feels unfixable. Well, with that attitude. But anyway, I ran into this guy, OCD kicked in because I was like, oh shit, I didn't feel anything but fear. And then he, I was like, sorry for running away like that. And then he said something like, you know, I was just trying to poke the embers and I was like, yeah, I don't think there was anything there. And he was like, you're right. I didn't feel anything there. And then my OCD Wait, kicked in. you just in. ran into him. How I know, but every, usually it's like embers. this epic lock. But usually I don't run away. So then I got the OCD in my head of like, wait, I have to make sure that there, I, I, I haven't become like a lesser mm-hmm. dull person. So I should run into him again to show him that it's there. And how then do you like, run into him? Do you know how to run into somebody? No, but I just had that thought. Okay. And then I turned it away. But that was the OCD does kick in in those moments where it's like- You want him to see you better. I want the last thing to be good. I always want the last sip of water to be perfect at Mm -hmm. night. I want the last thing to be this or else it'll contaminate the future. When you look in a mirror before going out, do you find the best version and then don't look in the mirror again? And now that's what you look like until you see yourself again? The opposite. I have mirror OCD and I have to look bad to myself or else I'll become a vain person. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I yeah. usually avoid the mirrors. Yeah, I avoid the mirrors. Oh my God. Yeah. The best thing about my house is there's a stained glass window in front of the sink and not a mirror. Could you imagine? So nice. Like when you're brushing your teeth. Oh no, I want a mirror for that. Do you really? Yeah, I like a mirror when I floss, if you know what I mean. Oh, I do. Mm-hmm. My mom taught me about that. Mirror flossing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're, um, 
your therapist wants you to find somebody who's kind and um, communicative mm -hmm. and you disagree. I just know it's not going to, it's unrealistic. You've never tasted it. I've been with kind and communicative and I was not nice to them. Right. It, it would have to be, I, if it, it, they would have to have something else. Like they would have to make more money than me or they would have to oh. be more capable than me. But usually so I am more capable, make more money, oh. and then they are the sensitive one, which I can't. So you, you need somebody who's capable, makes uh, at least 85K a year. Um, tall? No, doesn't have to be tall. Short? Doesn't, I'm a good, you can be 5'9". Um, what about looks? Do you care how the guy looks? I do date exclusively pretty hot people. Yeah? Yeah, because I grew up very not hot. I was a big fat fatty. Right. Mall goth. Right. So I kind of am, if I date somebody unattractive, I'm usually like, you're going to pull me back into the mall goth phase. So do you think that um, dating comedians who aren't um, able to yet support themselves just doing comedy <laughs> um, and the fact that they're hot is going to get in the way of that? Yes. How funny could they be? They're funny. How funny if they're hot? Well, they're hot to me. They're not hot to other people. Right, because they have a wall up in their Yes, cool. right. exactly. I just think I'm not ready to settle down. Uh, and the how idea old are you, 22? 31. Wow, you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say 22, you'll, you'll probably mature into it. But. Right, 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 right. Hopefully, yeah. So 31, so you're still young. But I don't, ha but the idea of like being with somebody, like a, being a comedian who gets on stage and is like my boyfriend, that is a nightmare to me. Well, you don't have to talk about your boyfriend. Yeah, but that's I talk like, about like everything. saying I don't want to have a red shirt because I don't want to go on stage and talk about my red shirt. Uh, but I, I will talk about the red shirt. Really? Yeah. You've talked about red shirts? I'm, sh I'm sure. I, I, not, I have to acknowledge what's going on in my life immediately upon getting on stage. Right. And if it isn't turmoil, it, it, I, it's hard for me. If right. I'm like, yeah, I'm in a steady relationship, I feel like a burlap sack. There has to be turmoil happening. Um, you know, you could make a good basket out of a burlap sack. That's true. It's woven. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're getting it. Could you make a good airport bin out of a burlap sack? Uh, I would like to no. try. <laughs> I would like you to cannot. put a burlap sack in the bin you so could. I don't have to. Do you have cleanliness OCD or do you have obsessive intrusive thoughts OCD? If you have cleanliness OCD, is this? Those aren't the only two, uh, but it's more so the cleanliness one, but it's not specific to germs. There's a lot of rituals, routines. Contamination. Um, contamination, but but not necessarily from germs. Like it could be energy. I believe that energy is more, I believe in the cleanliness one is less OCD than the energy one. The energy, if somebody says I have energy cleanliness, I'm like, that's bona fide OCD. Like if I, when I was younger, if somebody was a little whack, like if they were like, yeah, my mom's a cunt, I wouldn't be able to touch them because I was worried I'd become like them. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. I didn't want to become the kid who called their mom a cunt, you know? Look at you now. I know. My sister's the cunt. Well, My mom's an angel. She's going to be a mother soon. She is a mother. So she is going to also be a mother still soon. She's a cunt. And she's a good mother, but she's a bad um, cunt. She's 37, right? Or was 38 in June? Yes. Still hotter than me. June 2nd? Uh, September 23rd. The child will be for June 10th. Right. Pretty close. June 2nd, birthday of my first love of my life who had walls. What's his name? You want to get him on the phone? I don't know if we'll click up. Do I have his number memorized? Let's see. It's I'm kind of a I'm kind of a deleter, you know what I mean? Nope. What does that mean? Like I delete. I delete the numbers. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. It's not in there. Okay. Actually, he texted me about Corden, so maybe. Ooh, how was Corden? I think it's really annoying that they don't give you a hotel, so I was a little. What do you mean? Do they fly you out there? They don't fly you out. They don't give you a hotel. They're... Because they think there's no way they're saying no. Should I call him? He won't pick up. Well, if, if that's the case, we got to put him uh, through here. What are you going to say? You can say whatever you want. Ask him about the walls. Well, no. First, you're going to say hello and let him know that we're on a podcast. And if okay. he's not okay with it, we'll edit it out. And if he is, we have some questions. And you'll ask the questions? He won't pick up. There's no way. This is so great.
We could call anybody. We could call my moms. Yeah. My like stepbrother. I had sex with my stepbrother. People like caring about that. I'm not into that okay, kind of great. stuff. Just send me a video. My heart is racing. Oh, you need the headphones. Don't have it on speaker either. The headphones are behind you. Okay. He's not going to pick it up. Could you take it off speaker? I can't. Yeah. He's not gonna Hello. How's it going? It's Jordan. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. I'm on the I'm on a podcast with a uh, Rick Glassman. Have you heard of him? Yeah, he's yeah. You don't have to lie. No, really. I, I know you haven't heard of him. There's no way. Okay. He's really hard to find on the internet. I did know his podcast. Oh. Take your shoes off. It's very very funny. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, what's up? Oh, we were calling because uh. Turns out, it turns out I, I date guys who have walls up. So we were talking about that. Samantha, put the dishes in the sink. <laughs> so, go ahead. Is that your daughter? Yes. Did you already have a kid? I thought you weren't going to have a kid unless it was with me. That's what we go. promised. Go. That's what we promised. Go. Okay, I miss you. Okay. Well, that went well. Yeah. That was really awesome that you got him like that. I'm hard. What does that mean? You're Rock hard after just hearing his voice yell at Samantha like that. Feel, your clitoris is filled My with blood? My clitoris is hard. <sighs> Relationships are tough, dude. There, I'm going to unplug my phone, I feel like. Right? Yeah. Just in case. I went to school with a just in case. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I don't believe you. All right. I'll get him on the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be him. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> I'm just in case. Um... Anyway, uh, that's my attachment style. Yep. You can see the red line? Yeah. That's what's interesting about like perspective where like if you know where something is, you could see it a lot easier. There's no red light. I'm looking. Okay. Do you see it on that one? No. That one. Oh, gotcha. Now do you see it on this one? Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Look at you. We can't see something. It's called take your shoes off? Yeah. I know. We can't see something if we don't know where it is, or at least it makes it more difficult. And that's the same with self-awareness. And we think we can't find something because we have no experience with it. We've never seen it before. But once you know where it is, it's easier to access. And that's why I think it's important that you at least know where this healthy person is and knows where what, are they? Show me immediately. Like. Well, I mean, I'm off the market. Right. But yeah. there are people Many like me out there. Many fish in the sea, only two fish don't have, aren't racked with autism. You know what I mean? I don't. What does oh. that mean? What are you implying? That everyone has autism? Well, or that nobody has statistically, it? the people that are on the market are avoidance, which are people who have walls because they're never in relationships because they break up very easily, right? No. Yes. You're just talking about a category, not the category. That's the main category that's out there, that's single. No. But ew, anyway, even if I was to date somebody who's like, I'm really into you, it would be immediate. No, because then what? You're just together? Do you have any good, close friends? Yeah. Do you enjoy them? Yeah. Are you turned off by them because you enjoy the company? If they tried to have sex with me. That's not what I'm asking. Oh. Are you turned off by people who like you and you have a good time with? If it's like, if it, it's not sexual. But if it, they like me too much, if they're like, I'm having such a good time with you, I jump out a window. What if I told you this is one of the favorite, my most favorite podcasts I've ever done, at least in a long I'd time. I'd hit you with your gay orchid. I'm already upset. <laughs> really? Because you're laughing. You don't seem upset. Your body language I is would be good. Really you're flattered. hiding behind some pillows. I'd be really flattered, but that's because I know that you're. this is a good podcast. You're a good comedian and you're taken. You know, you know what's interesting. If you weren't taken and you said, this is one of my favorite podcasts, I'd start to get a little weird. Really? Yeah. You think I'd be interested in you? Okay. You know what? <laughs> Miss Switchblade Tattoo? Fat kid? I am... Under a pillow? Yeah. You can obviously see by my body movement that I'm not switchblade, okay? okay. It's obviously d a defense I built up for having a rough childhood. We know. So watch it. You know, it's interesting. You said that it would be different because I have a good podcast. Get that off the pillow. I have a good podcast. And what I think that, which, by the way, thank you so much. And your ex even liked it. But what I think is interesting about Why aren't this, there photos on the walls? Why aren't there pictures on the walls in here? I have my opinions on that as well. And it's not for me to say. It's not my place. Gotcha. 
we like our walls sterile here, <laughs> but it is still nice. It's, it's industrial and warm. Would you agree? There's nothing warm about it. It is industrial we and very nice. We put up some color curtains. If you think there is one quality to this place that is warm, the chairs, you think those are warm chairs? Those are an angry cat's throne. <laughs> mm -hmm. You sound like an angry cat. <laughs> that Those are the throne no, of if you. Bobby Kelly became a, a king when? cat. When? Now. Bobby Kelly becomes a king cat. Yeah, I, I, oh, I like, we'd that. like to put a nice rug in here. <laughs> I, um, but, uh, you know, I don't like to talk about other people's places. It feels like a nail salon. <clears throat> um, it feels like a Russian lady who also looks Chinese for some reason is going to come is, in. Which is fine. And give me a, a, a procedure of some kind. Yeah. And it's not going to hurt. No, but it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy ain't complaining. Mm -hmm. He's not. I'd love to see the bathroom. Would you like a tour? No. <laughs> First base. <laughs> So when I said, well, what if I told you this is a great time? Well, first base. You mean first step? No. <laughs> no, that's that's my first base. The orbs? Do you think those are warm orbs? Please tell me where the warmth is. Uh, the warmth comes from the, the feeling I have with the person who lives here. Okay. But yes, I would Are mind they a Japanese and tiny? It, it doesn't matter. But it doesn't yes. matter. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you were going to be more okay with somebody telling you that they really enjoy you because they have a good podcast slash, and I'm not speaking about me. I'm just speaking about what your instinct is. Oh, it seems interesting that you're okay with it if you respect the other person. So I think not only do we need to find somebody nice, I think we need to find somebody we respect, which is intuitive to some, but to you, it seems not so much. These people that are combination bowling alley, which is great by the way, but and comedian, and not that funny, and not that tall. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. Funny. Oh, yeah? No, I respect the people I date. It's just, you know, they're a little bit... Well, maybe. So if I were to date somebody who was, like, doing well in comedy, I think I would be too insecure. Why are all the options comedians? Because I don't talk all? to anybody else. Yeah, I hear you. So also, because I don't know who your ex is. Maybe he is funny. He is. Um, I don't, I'm not really meaning to talk shit about anything. I'm just saying, how excited are we and how much do we look up to and respect these people? One of the most recent one, too much respect. You respected him a lot? Mm-hmm. So too much, even. Wow. But I, I think I'm more, I have more traction going in comedy, but I respected him far more than he respected me. Well, there you go. What I need is like a little, like a, I need the, somebody who's very, very good at something else and who also is endeared by my of disheveled, course. my disheveled nature. That's difficult to find. Most of the people I respect, I respect them intellectually and intellectuals are a little concerned with like all of the like, oil stains. Yeah, and, I would have some problems. Yeah, right. So who, this is Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I won't say your name. All right, go ahead. We're with Rick, Rick Glassman. Hi, so also bleep my name then. <laughs> and um, so we have said a name before, so we're gonna have to bleep just so people don't put one, oh, two wow, and two Oh wow, yeah, together. I did say your full name, including your yeah, middle so name. Yeah, so we're, sure we're gonna bleep all the names. <laughs> um, sorry, that was a, a, a cat king. Um, hi, uh, uh, is it? Bleep it. Oh my yeah. God. Bleep it. We're talking. What's your name? Jordan. Jordan. Uh, bleep oh it. God. We're talking about uh, Jordan is, is, is revealing some, some patterns of her behavior and she tends to be attracted to men, which already shocker that uh, have walls up. And I guess that would lead to assume that you, at least when you two dated had walls up. Would you agree with that statement? Have a walls up? Yes. Do you, have you never heard of a walls up? <laughs> No. You know those hats that have the spinny top? No, no, no. I'm just kidding. A wall up. An emotional wall. Well, he was also a kid. It's hard to dis defer, discern if he had a wall up. Oh, well, then never mind. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> you got to lead a little bit here. You I mean, want me to lead? No, bleep it. Not talking to me. And well, what is, not, the, what is your question that you well, want to ask? I want to know how much you two were on the same page of what the obstacles were. Well, there weren't many. The main obstacle was, I would say, the uh, you, we were very young. How how old were you guys? How old were we? Twenty two. Hmm. Did you just eat something tasty? <laughs> um, I think we were 20, 20, 21. 20, 21. 
Yeah, 21. And we dated for a long time. We were very close friends. How long did y'all date? But then my pro- the issue with me, I get a little obsessive compulsive. I get really clingy. And then people are like, I got to bail. I have to live my life. You know what I mean? No, I would say, would say I would say that he's in the category of people we couldn't really talk through it easily. You would he would just disappear into the. He seems like a chatterbox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are you banging something against the wall right now? Oh yeah. Are you just throwing the phone into the a canister and shaking it around? <laughs> how how about now? Are you walled? Are you wall man now? That's a good one. No, 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 no. no. Wall man. I think that we got, have got enough out of him the fact that he's only set, repeated back the last word of every sentence we've, of even, not even every sentence, just every other. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Could you hear me? Yeah. I'd say partial wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Half wall, knee wall, if you will. Knee wall. What about in your current relationship? Do you have walls up, or, or is it pretty communicative? Oh, you're holding a switch. I am holding a knife. I'm really sorry. <laughs> what? You're communicative. Yeah. Really? Like if there, like if there's issues, you talk it out. We would yeah. more battle it out. One time, I got drunk and threw a goldfish. You at, asked him a question. At, a sorry. Seconds sorry. Go ahead. Answer. Sorry. Let him. He's not going to answer. I know he's not going to answer. See, he's a wall you're man. Writing, you're writing stories. Give him a chance. If you saw him, he is a cinder block. Well, I would love wall. to listen to him, but you don't stop. All right, go ahead. Say, you can say whatever you want. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Bleep his name. <laughs> you have to bleep his name or he'll send a bomb in the mail and blow me up. I know it. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, bud. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> have a good one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm uncomfortable. I'm legitimately uncomfortable. <laughs> you need to ask him if he's okay. I mean, we're gonna he's gonna be anonymous, but <laughs> I also was it a connection with this? Maybe I just want you to know no, 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 no. He's just like that. That's what I'm saying. The dudes that I date are like that. They don't they will not communicate about anything emotional. Is he gonna be okay? Is he gonna be upset with us? No, not at all. I hate that you told him my name. Oh, we'll bleep it. We'll bleep it. Yeah, bleep it back for him. Bleep back his memory. Um, what, what, a, what a um, you know, for somebody who's so uh, so extroverted like you, um, he's very extroverted. Is he? I'm gonna text him and say thank you. Yeah, that's good. Smart. I like that. I'm gonna say thank you. You know, uh, wall. You know the 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 framing. Of this, I haven't checked anything yet. I'm just not, I feel like I'm not going to love at least my camera, the angle and the lighting. Yeah, We're an hour in, if not more. I'm not saying we have to do it all over. I'm just saying, can we start from when I came back in with the taser? No, certainly not. One second. I'm just kidding. I'm going to get a little ice. I can't do the headphones. I'm feeling like, and I mean this in a, uh, in a this isn't, you know, like people say, when you're having a good time, time goes fast. When you're having a bad time, it goes slow. I'm having a really good time, but it also feels like a, it's been a long, a lot. Yeah. Right? How long has it been? We're coming up at two hours, 45 minutes. We are not. Mm-hmm. We are not. No, I'm saying that's what it felt like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's no, no. Do it. Like an hour and a half. His response was, thank you. What did you send? Say, say thank you. Huh? I said, thank you. <laughs> Wall, you did great. Bleep, bleep. Wall is funny. Bleep, bleep. Wall. Oh, then just bleep the, the bleep. Keep the wall. <sighs> you said you were being anonymous. You have to be fair. Yeah. St- but That's not, the last one. But it's more, it's too much work. One more. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, let's have some fun with it. Let's do some silly, like, boring, oh, no. boring bleeps instead of the beep. We'll do some boy Oh, nice. You know, cartoony. Is there a guy who does this? Oh, yeah. My boy, John Mikes. He's and fantastic. He, does he do the things that you've been telling him to do? Oh, and yeah. Do the thing? Yeah, we do. We wow. do. We do. This podcast, it's We're really insane. abusive to our producers. We have a producer, too, and it's abuse. Um, Yeah, I don't mean... We make art. We really do. Like, we're being silly. We're also being introspective. 
think we can't find something because we have no experience with it. But once you know where it is, it's easier to access. And that's the same with self-awareness. The bite might be a penis. Everything has a lot of layers. This is a smart, beautiful, brilliant artistic podcast. You guys just sit in the thing and you're like, oh, I have a mustache. Oh, I have a to be fat. It's bad. Who refuses to be fat? No, you talk, always talk about how you used to be fat. Like, get over Oh, it. you mean me and Ian's podcast. I've listened to, I'm not exaggerating, I've listened to probably 50 episodes. When Ian came out, I was listening to it nonstop because I had so much fun with him and I keep trying to like figure out what this thing is and it's, I can't. I hate your podcast. No, Do you really? No, 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 no. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Do you see my face fall? Did you listen to it? <laughs> we're, we're getting turned on. You hate <laughs> yeah. the things I do. Do you hate it? Yeah, 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 totally. Um, I move in immediately. Wait a minute. Um, you don't respect me? That's all it takes. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, listen, yeah. my podcast, opposite of this, very warm zone. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. We want to plug warm it? zone? We were going to plug at the beginning and we never did. Remember? Being in with Jordan. Being in with Jordan. Which you could get anywhere you get your local podcasts. At anywhere at all. But you should watch it on YouTube. It's more like a television show. We do tase each other a lot. It's pretty fun. Do you really? Yeah. Hmm. I Yeah, we like the taser. Only one guest has tased themselves. Who is that? Jake Velasquez. Oh, Jake Taser Velasquez. Yes. Is that where right. he got his name? Yeah. Funny. Taser face. Yeah. Yeah. TF. Yeah. Uh, I met Ian here in this studio. On this that is couch. in a studio. Yes, it is. I apologize. It's okay. But, you know, it's a studio. It's crazy that this is a home and not a studio. It is a studio. Wow. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is it? While we're here. Oh, okay, okay. And then we, I bring in all the pictures. It actually and I makes the rugs a lot up. of sense as a studio with the candy. Mm -hmm. I might want a piece of that candy. Do you want me to bring it over now? You, I'm not quite ready for it. Well, before wanna, I leave. Okay. 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 Um, so you don't talk about your interpersonal life very much on podcasts? No. Not dating. But you'll talk about the OCD. Um, so there's something about podcasting that there's a lot about this that I like. Um, I, I like the, the, the most for me part about it that I like is I like to have conversations with friends in a way where it's like there is a direction and a point to like there's a friends that I have that that I'm now friends with that I used to like, you know, peers and people I liked in comedy that you would see around, but you never had two hour conversations with them one on one. Right. This is an excuse to do that. Plus I get to meet people. I'm meeting you. I think we might become friends. Yes. And what a cool thing I've been able to have on people that I look up to that I had never met that I wouldn't have an opportunity, but now they want to do my podcast. And it's like, this is amazing. I get to do this. So I love that about podcasting. I also love being able to grow an audience and sell tickets now because of it mm -hmm. and just have this product where I'm now making money. What I don't like about it is the access that I'm giving this audience. Ah, uh, yes. Not only the amount of things we're talking about just by design of two hours a week, but also week after week after week after, it doesn't stop, right? Right. And when I meet people that I never met before, they know things about me, which, you know, as a comedian having an audience, there's some benefit to that. But just as somebody who, believe it or not, despite what I'm doing with so many cameras, am a private person, touches me the, the wrong way. Mm. So I've made up certain rules of things I don't want to talk too much about. Not because they're secret. There are, you know, like things that happen outside and then people see it. Like I'm never consciously like hiding anything. But on the podcast, unless this serves a purpose for me in a moment, like I'm wanting to relate about something, I don't like revealing certain things about myself. And it doesn't feel secretive. I don't keep it from friends necessarily. Right. I'll talk about it on stage even. Uh, like, I'll talk on stage about any of the stuff, but that's for us for yes. right now. This, you know, I get millions of views on these. So having that out there, it's like, I, and then it's kind of, anybody could go back. My point of view will change. And I'm okay with my point of view changing because that's human. But my relationship stuff and certain personal stuff with family, it's like, yes. also I have my family on all the time, but that's play. Uh, I'm not talking about family stuff. Right. It's not for you. With all due respect, it's not for you. I tell, I am the opposite. I am, if I'm as, tra if I say everything. I know. Constantly. You, ha you have like, to. Like if, like last week I just became a libertarian for a few days. Because you found out what that is. Right. Right. And I just was that. Define it for me. Uh, to you. No taxes and the government's, the government is there to serve 
uh, to protect your the what's it called private property mm. and uh, like an easement. safety Somehow and that's it. it. Okay, they're not they're not there for, for anything else. Okay, and then I, I started you. thinking about it and I was like maybe that would be good and then I started lo- listening to Ron Paul and then I started really going down this rabbit hole. So I just go down these rabbit holes and then for a day I become this like insane. You know I can go down the rabbit hole of being like. I don't think non-binary should, you know what I mean? I can switch a million different you ways. You finish with that as non-binary should be what? Well, I, on stage, have been, been talking about how I think non-binary women need to stop becoming non-binary. Got it. That I would like that. And I've been talking about that. And what or, does that mean? Because I don't remember what means what. You're saying that women who identify as both should only be one. Like I'm like, if like you, me as someone with four mothers has this point of view. Right. right. So if you were like, if it, you know, people always call you a woman. So you're like, all right, I'll just be non-binary because this is confusing. Because I know people do that. And so you're like, I'll be non-binary because it's confusing for people. And I, I'm saying, no, Rick, you should say, stay a man so that you extend what is a ma- masculine to salmon sweaters, pink pants, yellow socks, feminine. Very girly. What's feminine about this? You know, there's a sign I saw in Ikea once about designing. It said, be bold, not beige. And I bought some new sweatpants. Some beige, pink, pink, nearly beige. Question, without uh, removing any judgment you have toward the palette, would you agree that these are all in similar hues and on a similar palette? A hundred percent. So it matches well. Not necessarily for a man's outfit in your opinion, but I'm saying the colors, they are harmonious. To a baby, yes. I'm not asking to whom. A baby, are they flamingo or the pig? colors on their own? The colors not as Little. close, just on a palette where you have like here we're going to paint today. This is these colors. Yes. Oh, I see why these go together. The baby's nursery, right. all together at once. Now we you, you tell me how much you believe this statement, and I am telling you the truth. I am so comfortable wearing this. You look great. What's the problem? There's no problem, but I'm just saying you shouldn't identify as non-binary. You should identify as a man. Well, I do, but not because I should. Oh, oh I see. But I've felt non-binary before. I've gone through those feelings. Oh, I you used, thought you were a libertarian. Right. I've gone through that all at once. But I'm just saying, I, I do think that we're creating more of a binary with the non-binary okay. thing. Sure. That's what I believe. I think, and again, my audience is, I only perform to woke people. I think we should all just do whatever it is that makes us feel good. And if somebody doesn't like it, phew, the heck with them. Because this is my life. Yes. Agreed. Yes. Now, which is uh, different from the Frank Sinatra song, My Way. This is a Bon Jovi song. It goes like this. It's my life. You might want to put your headphones on for a second. That, is that Bon Jovi? It's my life. It's now or never. And we need it. I, I ain't going to live forever, I think, maybe. Maybe you won't. <laughs> maybe I won't. But, you know, that's Bon Jovi. That was really good. That's something you could say to people when things are going like weird and you don't know what's going on. It's like, what the fuck are the chunks and this and the coffee? Hey, that's Bon Jovi. That's Bon Jovi. There's a restaurant that I, what was it called? Bon, where they flip, flip. Bon me. Bon, no. Where they flip. Are you talking about Dan Soder when he left? Yeah. Bonfire. Sad. Why did he leave? I could tell you, but then I'd have to. Uh, um, Burn me in a no, fire? No, I have to edit it out. Oh, gotcha. I know about it. I know about I know everything. I know, I know about, everything, too. I know everything. Really? I know. Tell me he something me. crazy. I can't because you'd hurt your feelings. Just tell me. Okay. When I was at, when I was at, he was real mad at me and he goes, he, he I couldn't figure out why he was so mad at me, but he's. And I was like, I'm really sorry. And then. And he said, shut the door behind you. And I said, okay. And he said. <laughs> and now when I jerk off, it's exclusively to. <laughs> come in here. That's my spank bank. Dan Soder told you that. Yeah. Obviously bleep some of that. That's fucking nuts. I know. I didn't want to tell you. I won't say anything. Okay. Okay. But he likes you. Aside from that, he likes you a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he just said that like there's some things, those things in particular that he couldn't really didn't sit well with him. I, I, I don't because we're editing around this. I don't want to make it more complicated. I understand. Okay. Uh, are you happy doing comedy? Very. Yeah. Do you yeah. think you're great or good? I think I'm very good. Yes. When will you be great, or will you never? I will be great when I um, am able to do comedy as animated as 
I am sometimes when I'm depressed. That's but, when I'll be great. But that's that'll never happen. This is it who will. you are. It will happen. Why? How? You Why know, will you be able to do it later? I feel like Sebastian Maniscalco can move like that. I think if you're healthy and you're fit, you can tell your body to do things without your mind. I think no. you need to have, be well slept, take care of yourself. I do agree. Get a lot of kale. Not too much. Too much. No, they, it's, it could aggravate your stomach. Of course, but that's a good aggravation. That's the aggravation. That's how Maniscalco does those dips. No. It's kale. No, you think you think pain is progress and you think truth is an excuse. And I think we just found the new title of your special. Critical folly. Stop. That's mine. <laughs> Stop. I know. I Listen, I think we can both have it. Yeah. As that's long fine. as mine comes out first. What? If mine comes out first. This is good. I'm having a nice time with you. It's funny that you meet people and you're like, oh, yeah, this is nice. I'd like for you to open for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I won't open for you. Your your audience would have left already. I've I've gone full edge lord. Really bad. Too far. I'm not talking about on stage. Oh. I'm just saying open. Like, like things for me. Get the oh, door, okay. open a jar. Who does open for you? I don't have an opener. Really? No. You don't bring one? I uh, am just now starting to tour. I never really I did it years oh, ago. LA, a LA, bit. LA, LA, LA. Um, don't blow into the microphone, please. LA. Um, well, oh, yeah. I blew right into it. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm just starting to tour now and, uh, I don't know what kind of money I'll make yet. Are you going to move here? No. Did you ever live here? No, but I like being here. But you, are you, where are you from? Cleveland. Wow. My favorite. Boyer or Myers. Club Tired. of all time. Hilarities. Yes. Yeah. Pickwick Nick. and Frolic. Yeah. Love him. Love it. He's love the it best. there. Love him. It's great. I, I great want food. Great food. Great food. Here's a plug He's to Hilarities. The Comedy's funny if the comic's good. The food's guaranteed to be delicious. But the steak at Hilarities, you got to get the steak sandwich and not the steak. That's the trick. Oh, I think I get I get the steak there. I've never gotten a steak sandwich. But not, but I think there's a, you have to ask for the special steak or else you get the puck steak. I, I get the filet. Yeah. I get the filet, side of potatoes, uh, fries, side of barbecue sauce. And I try to get a little potato, a little fry, a little steak on every bite. A fry with the potato. Yeah. Talk about overdoing it. You think I'm overdoing kale. You're you're tuber heavy, man. I'm sorry. Are you not familiar with macros of protein, carbohydrates, and fat? Uh, I am. Well, I'm getting my protein from the steak. Gotcha. And I'm getting my fat from the waitress who <laughs> brought me <the> peppers. <laughs> not that she's fat, but as a woman right. with, who's more estrogen heavy than a man typically is. By design, the body, the woman's body carries a little bit more fat. It's true. It needs to, to rear the children. To what the children? Rear. From the back? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ride above. Druthers, if you will. Yeah. Grab their druthers. That's how you ride a woman th via their druthers. You get paid three, four thousand at the end of a weekend. That's the name of my special, via their druthers. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid. all the time. I need to get paid more because I'm spending too much money right now. Why what are you am spending, spending money? Yeah. How do you fly? Delta. How, I'm saying. Do you fly With economy? Do you actual airplane. leg room? Do you do first class? Just regular, whatever it is. Comfort, Comfort often plus. because of the medallion membership. Nice. But. But you don't pay for that. I don't pay for that, but I'm spending too much money on other things like. Sharpening your blade. Where is my money going? It's Ubers. It's Ubers. It's Ubers. It's Uber. I don't eat. I don't do any. I don't buy clothes, obviously. Mm-hmm. But the Ubers. How much money do you spend on Uber a month? It's so much. More than 2000 Well, you know what it is? It's this relationship I've been in. It's breakup, 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 breakup. And when I'm going through a breakup, I'm just like a, I'm a impulse Uber getter. So I'm like, even though the train's going to my house, I'm sad. I'm right, Uber. right. You, you're just, it's your self-care and I get that. It is my self-care. Yeah. Yes. The Uber's a self-care. Yeah. And I'm doing too much self-care lately. No, you're not. I need to start doing self-hate. No, you're doing too much of that. I need to have a cheat day where I'm nice to myself. And the rest is just all emotional abuse. When did you break up? Nine times over the last year. When was the last time? The beginning of February. When you break up with somebody the first time, did he break up with you? You with him? Was it mutual? He breaks up with me every time. Everybody breaks up with me. I can't get out of a relationship. Even if I hate them, I stay. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I understand that. I'm not that. Are you really not that? I was that kind of. 
I'm always that way. If I break up, I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why would I do that? Right. They love me. What am I doing? Yeah. It's, there's something about, um, fear of, uh, when things aren't ironically binary, um, and there's no, it's, there's no black and white. Um, then there is the fear of making the wrong decision. And with that comes the regret, uncertainty, and the need for control. Thank you. And, um, yeah. So when you break up with somebody, should I not have, I get that. Yeah. Uh, the obsessive thoughts. But when somebody breaks up with you once and wants to get back together. Hell yeah. Maybe. Uh, That's what once I it happens a second I time. Hell yeah. yeah. But when it happens a second time, it becomes a pattern. What about eight? How about at eight? What do we call that? Shame on you. Yeah. Shame on Yeah, that's us not all. that's not a safe person. Oh. Yeah, but I get it. I get the like I get the wanting to break up. I understand it because I have the same impulse. Yeah, to to, to react to something and want to run away. Don't you have the thing where you wake up and you're like, what am I just going to think in English today with this person? We're going to go get the coffee, talk to each other. Some days I wake up and I'm a Baba Duke in the corner oil painting with my own blood and I'm like, I can't be in a relationship. I'm a wild steed. Okay. I can't be, I can't do this. Okay. So then when a guy dumps me and they're like, I can't do, I'm like, I get it. And then they're like, actually I can. I'm like, okay. What about if they didn't dump you and just like, I, I can't, I, I just want to be alone today. And then I'll see you tomorrow or the day after. And knowing that they're that still there. Is still, that, that is still them like participating in the chore of monogamy and relationships. So and, monogamy is an issue. It's not even monogamy. It, it is just the monotony. It's more monotony than monogamy. It's, they're very close, which is similar, which is interesting. They're similar, which is interesting. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I get worried about you're in a relationship and you're like, when is it? It feels like have, if I'm sober, I don't drink, right? So it, when the, when you start being sober, it feels like you're just holding a balloon up and you're like, okay, at some point I have to let this balloon drop or else I'm going to be stuck doing this forever. Uh, and that, what is that a metaphor for? Dropping in a relationship, the is getting back into drinking, right? And you and then eventually you're like, oh no, the balloon's gone and I'm just operating, right? In a relationship, I never get past that point where it feels like you're just going like this. The whole time, it feels like I'm just like, we have to, we're staying together. We're doing things together. We're going to go have a date. The date's weird. Why am I, am I a person who goes on dates? I don't want to eat in front of this. Oh, we're just, what are you going to, what are we going to? It gonna, sounds like you're not with people that you respect and like and enjoy. I am, but there's something about the playing house thing that I'm inherent. Well, then stop playing house. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, and that, if you don't want to be with a person, then don't. And if you do, do it in any way you want to do it. Yeah, that's hard because I'm a woman. It's hard to not fall prey to the little biological imperatives that we're seduced into. Yeah, and then do those things when you feel like doing them. Yeah. You know, um, I uh, will be uh, visiting my girl and sometimes stay in the guest room. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Um she had to wake up early for work today. Um, she's also fine getting two and a half hours of sleep for whatever reason. That's insane. Um, Those people are, I can't imagine. I'm a nine hour. I need yeah. seven. I'm <sighs> almost always going to get eight. I like to get more. Eight. I'm hungover at seven. Like have the hungover, like yeah. can't really. Nine is sweet spot. Nine is my. We're getting eight. below the line. I want to finish right. my point. You're right. Keep the All right. up. Somebody's texting. Just making sure it wasn't. She had to get up early. Believe that. Uh, just the name. And I did not want to get up early. So, okay. I'll sleep in the other room. Yeah. I'm going to sleep in the other room tonight. Okay. That doesn't have anything to do with how we feel about one another. It just makes sense. I'm going to do what I want to do. She's going to do what she wants to do. The point I'm making is playing house. Oh, you're supposed to sleep in the same room. I've thought about this for years. If I'm ever fortunate enough to be so sure and find my partner and we decide we want to get married and move in together and I'm making and or we are making enough money to buy a nice house, I want us each to have our own bedrooms. But that in itself to me is what I'm describing as house. A, co a sy symbiotic relationship with somebody is inherently in my, where I am in my life right now, a little bit death-like. Okay. Like the idea of being like, I'm going to go sleep in the other room honey, I love you, but that, that's what we're doing. And them waking up and being like on a podcast going, hey, that's what we do sometimes because it's working. That for me is like, eesh, a little bit. 
of it's the functionality of a relationship to me feels a little bit like a loss of freedom. Yeah, well then you shouldn't be in a relationship right, right now. Can you tell me about my house idea? Yes. I have my own bedroom. I, she, I, she, I we all knew that was where right. We yeah, but knew. let me explain like oh, the fun okay. of it. Okay, gotcha. More cat throwing. More. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I think nobody wants to be with you. I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be great friends after this. She has her own bedroom. Yeah. She does it her own way. No pictures on the wall. Cold, sterile. Scary. Me, posters, Dragon Ball Z figurines, fun, color, rugs. I'm going to sleep in my room sometimes and she'll sleep in her room sometimes. And then I bet you a lot of times, do you want to sleep over? Yeah. She'll sleep over in my place. This is my place. I get my side of the bed. This is how my place goes. This is, it's cold. Yeah, if you're too cold, we'll figure it out. But I put on a sweatshirt or get under the covers, but if it's, we'll figure it out. But like, this is my room. We'll sleep in her room. She does it the way she wants. Right. We have sleepovers. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. I like that. Yeah. I once even thought it would be so cool to have our own houses next to each That's other. That's what I would want with a gerbil tube connecting them. I've, I used to think about this as like in the basement, there's a tunnel. Sub, sub basement yeah yeah and also you could treat it as like also like an emergency shelter slice slice like you could slice I sorry know, i knew you would i'm sorry no, i right. can't I let it go it. <laughs> i said it. i fucked up man <laughs> yep give her the okay okay and um maybe even better like what if i lived on the west coast and she lived on the east coast oh but we had a tunnel yeah but a tunnel like that like elon musk elon you know, musk you know, yeah bosses. I've heard of him. Yeah, that makes it. And it, I get there in like 20 minutes. What happened to his tunnel? Tunnel minutes. Right. Exponential tunnel minutes. ETMs. That's the name of my special that's coming out after Critical Folly. Yeah. See and after then ETM. Others. Okay. What happened to Elon Musk? Didn't you hear? He bought Twitter, lost half of this fortune. That's when I got a Twitter the second he bought it. Can you believe it? Oh, but it's a fake Twitter. It's not actually mine. Somebody made it. I say bad things. I mean, they say bad things. Smart. Mm -hmm. It got hacked. It got hacked by somebody whose name is Jordan Jensen, but spelled with two G's. Jordan G. Jordan Jensen. G. Jensen? Yeah. That sounds like somebody who um, uh, does a lot of puppetry. Yes. Yes. Jordan. Jordan G. Jensen. Well, I actually think it would just be pronounced Gordon now that I'm thinking about it. Well. You're gonna Gordon to, Genson. Yeah. No, that sounds like a guy who really knows how to work Wall Street. Gordon Genson? Yeah. I agree with or you. Or is good with insurance claims. Or is like a translator of uh, novels. Right. It was a Gordon Gecko joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Who's Gordon Gecko? I don't know if that's really his name, but I think that's the guy from Wall Street. I don't think that's right. Wall. Yeah, what are you going to Google? Right, this, I'm so good at figuring out what questions to ask. Wall Street movie cast. Oh, no, that's Jordan... Michael Wolf Douglas plays. Oh, I was thinking Wolf on Wall Street. Yeah, Jordan Wolf. Going to IMDb. What are you looking? Gordon Gecko. Wow. Put up a picture. Wolf on Wall Street, played by Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio. Jordan Wolf, right? Yes. I don't know. Also a Wall Street movie. Charlie Sheen in Wall Street. Gordon Bud Gecko. Fox. Bud Fox. Bud Fox. Oh, his name is Bud? Yeah. No. Yeah. There's no way. Why? Spell it for me. B-U-D. Oh, Bud Fox. I see. You're pronouncing it. The Jewish accent. I got it. Bud Fox. What? What? First base. <laughs> so you make three, four thousand in a weekend and then they give you the check and you go like this. Mommy's getting lit tonight. Right? Yeah. You do this with a check to make sure it. I usually, noise. yeah, and I go too hard and I snap it and I say, Excuse, I need to write. Right, right. You need to write. I need to check. I snapped it with joy. And how do you cash it? Bank of, uh, of America the mobile app. deposit. My social security is one. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I apologize. When, uh, does your app have a thing that there's a limit to what check you could do that before you have to bring it in, the size of the check? I would never know the answer to that. I've never gotten a check bigger than $5,000. Never? Never. Are you prepared what's going to happen after this pod? We're going to throw your dates up, by the way. And then you're going to give me a big check? And then I'm going to write you a huge check. A big one? Oh, yeah. It's not going to be for much money, but oh, it's going to okay, be one of those okay, Happy okay, Gilmore okay. ones. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, No, no limit. Endless. Throw whatever you want in there. I can take a picture of a piece of paper. Forge it. Do you live alone? I do not, but I'm about to. 
hard decision. Who do you live with now, a roommate? Two comedians in a really beautiful home in Ditmas Park. Why are you moving? I have this problem where I walk. Have you seen Liar Liar? <laughs> I'm. Uh, yes. Roll the tape of you watching Liar Liar all the way through your childhood, a okay. montage. Okay. And then do you remember when he is uh, under this curse and he runs into the woman that he fucked in the elevator and she, the elevator door opens and he goes, holy hell, and runs away from her? Mm -hmm. That's how I feel every time I'd come home from a gig and my roommates are there. And I don't want to feel that way because I'm not okay with the debrief. It's beginning to cause me What rage. do you have to debrief? It's like I open the door, I have my suitcase, my backpack, and my buddies are like, hey, how was Dallas? How'd it go? And that brings up rage. And I'm like, I just want to make it to my bedroom with my stuff. May I solicit some? Please. Okay, first of all, if you want to leave, leave. This is not to say you shouldn't. But what right. I'm saying is it seems like the obstacle for your place isn't about the place itself or even the people. But as we spoke before, your inability or yes. unwillingness to finger yourself in front of your roommates. Do you have roommates? No. Why did you move out? Because uh, I could afford it. Because the debrief. I can afford it. Oh, then live by alone. But what I was going to say is your uh, your there's boundaries you could set. You know what my therapist doesn't say when I walk in anymore? How you doing? Yeah, mine. But what do we do with that? I made mine cry the other day. I feel bad about it. Did I see you post that? Did you talk about that? Go ahead. What happened? No, my therapist broke up with me. Well, somebody had to. Yeah. Uh, what happened? I was describing my... Uh, uh, I was going through the breakup and I was describing my childhood and he was trying to tell me that when somebody withholds affection, when they give it to me, I view it as like love. And then he was- Munchausen talking, syndrome. Right. And then he was talking about a patient he had that was in solitary confinement for 10 years. Didn't your dad have Munchausen? No. Munchies. My mom. Munchies. No, no, no. My mom no, munches. He smokes weed. Munchies. Right. Rugs. Both. Yes. Your dad has the munchies from the weed. Your dad has the munchies. Your mom has the munchies from the- um, Vaginas. You said it. So your therapist really said you can't go there anymore? That was the first one. That was a girl. He, she just said you need heavy. You need a better therapist. You need a more heavy artillery. Fair. But it's, I think it's funny to say that she broke up with me because yeah, she she said I had abandonment issues, and then she was like, "You need to see him." I think you should see a more experienced therapist, which I think is funny mm -hmm. and triggering. But also, she was setting her boundaries. She was. Yeah. But she was being. But I. But I. I drag her on stage a lot. But she was very away. young. But this guy, old, Jewish, amazing. We dress the same, come in with our Stuts hocus, of New York. The Stuts of New York. And he's great. I, he had teared a, up. I had a doctor, a general practitioner, that uh, I could, was getting a little annoyed, I could tell, from the questions I was asking. And I said, it seems like you're upset with me. And he said, Rick, I got to be honest. When I see your name on the door, I take a deep breath. Oh, my God. Yeah, I stopped going to him. Wow. Mm. What were the questions you were asking? I was there for, uh, I was getting a shoulder surgery, but I was also there for, I don't remember, something else, not for my shoulder surgery. But while oh, I was- Oh, so this isn't a therapist. No, my general practice, like a general, oh. actual general practice. Oh practice. yeah, you're neurotic. And I was asking some questions about my shoulder. He goes, that's not for me. You have to ask your surgeon. I go, I know, but I'm about to go in. I just, because I've known you longer. I just wanted to get, and he goes, and he got upset. And that's when he told me, I take a deep breath when you walk in the door. That's better than your therapist. If your therapist said that, that'd be crazy. If your therapist had to meditate before seeing him, mm -hmm. yikes. But what if you told your roommates, hey, uh, I haven't figured out why yet, but when I'm done with a show, I'm done with it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to have to come up with something. Do me a favor. I, I'm sorry. Don't ask me that stuff anymore. It just makes me anxious. I've asked many times. And or I've been like, hey, can I just, I just like need to get, when I come home, I just want to like drop my shit. I need to like decompress. I'm, but you're not being direct. You're not saying the thing. Because then it'll be weird. Then no, it's not. There, yes, it'll be You know why you said no to a, to, to a tour to this place? Because it was already established that you didn't want to. Once you establish something, it exists. Okay, have, so say. Have the, unco then have the awkward. Because then I'll thing. walk in and they'll be like. Then Fine. You could be like, then then you could make a joke about it. Everything was great. That's what I do now. I walk in, good, Dallas was good, going to my room. I hate when people say, how you doing? Because they're not interested and I don't want to tell them. And I thought about some merch would be a, a merch that says, good, thanks, how are you? That's great. Wouldn't it be? Great merch. Yeah. And then good you could also have a shirt that says, I'm good. So, you know, some people... I because you could have, I'm good if you don't want to ask the other person how they are. And or if the other person asked because of the shirt, you could just say, I'm good. 
I wish to get to a point in my life where the debrief is like, Dallas was great. It was good. But right now it's, I run angry. It's like opening the Uber and the Uber driver's like, you know, my friend was like, I, I opened the Uber and there was Christmas lights. And this woman was like, hi, my name's Suzanne. This isn't your average Uber. And I was like, I would have immediately slammed the door and be like, no, absolutely not. Next one. Well, then you would have lost a lot of money on that taxi cab show. What's it called? Taxi money. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, grab it, grab bag. Whatever that show yeah. is where you go in and there's all the lights and stuff. Yeah. And then you get to, he takes you and, yeah. Anybody's you, big experience, you know, like how people are like, I sat with a woman on the train and she asked me what book I was reading. I would smack her with the book and be like, I'm reading a book. Yeah, maybe. You know, and, and I don't feel this way about you because I am a person that is okay with this stuff and we have a different kind of relationship than other people have with you. But I'm, because I'm into it, but it just seems like you're a fucking mess. No, no. Go ahead. I'm, yeah. You're, no. You're mean to people. You don't like when people are having a good time. It gets in your way. You don't like when people think you're good having time. a good time. I want people to have a good time. Hey, I don't. my want... name's Samantha. This ain't your average Uber. You know what my, oh my, you know what my God. thought is? What a fucking day for me. Is that really but your also, thought? But also put Tell on the, the AC truth. and don't talk. Yes. But I literally, I was trying to learn how to say I'm deaf in sign language so that I would get into Ubers in the South and they wouldn't talk to me. I think it's just, mm -hmm. or. <laughs> Depending on who you are. Right. Yeah. But sometimes there is, and that's why I like New York because it is, I lived in Nashville and as soon as I came back here for a visit, I was like, oh my God, this is where I have to live. People are just moving and there's no. You could speak up for yourself without going to 10 immediately. Yes, you're right. Because I don't have any, because there is no zero to 10, I, no, sorry, because you're all right, because I don't set boundaries for myself at a two, I go to a 10 in inappropriate Well, you times. go to two, you go to three, you go to four, you're just, it's uh, it's subconscious to you. Yes. You don't recognize when you're at three. It's like, if you didn't know that you had to pee until you pissed your pants, it's like, well, right. you either, you have an empty bladder or you're pissing your pants. Yeah. And that's what it feels like. No, no, no. You're just not in touch with you knowing, oh, this is what my body needs. I have to go pee or I'll have to pee within the next hour or so. So, so you think I go home and I say, hey, when I get back from a trip, if you could just let me decompress for a minute. I think I think you find ideally an organic. How do I say, can you not ask me any questions ever? That's really what I well, want. Well, then, yeah, then move out. Okay, okay, okay. Because yeah. that's where I'm at. Yeah, then move out. I don't want any, ready for the le my least favorite question, what's that you're eating? You don't want to know what I'm eating. You want a bite. Take the whole thing. I'm leaving the house. Why'd you agree to come on a podcast with somebody who's going to ask you a bunch of questions? I like to be asked questions. So what's the problem? If I'm in my home, it's the one time I'm not podcasting or comedying or being Jordan. I just want to silence. And yeah, the only piece I get, right? you think? Yeah. It's just relentless, right? Being on as a comedian and everybody you talk to. But you don't have... Let's do it. I'm going to be you. You're going to be your roommates. Okay. Okay. Play it real. Okay. Okay. Hey, sorry about my, my motorcycle in the driveway. I had to run to a podcast and... Did, I, that's I cool. Did you it. drop it? Yeah. Also, something I want to talk to you about. Yes. I want to talk to you about. I've been. Also, this has nothing to do with you. Are you in a space where I could like tell you something I realized about myself? Because I've just been a little anxious. Do you mind talking to me for a second about it? Uh, okay. Sounds like you're not sure. You want me to do, talk about it with you later? No, you can say it now. What's up? Okay. I have been really anxious recently. Recently. I'm an anxious person. Why? Um, well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Did something happen? That's what I want to talk to you oh. about. Um, and that's why it's not about you. Like even the asking question, I've noticed that like, well, it is about me. Could because you, I'm you have to do me a favor. You have to let me talk. You just give me like two minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm on a lot. We do comedy, traveling, podcasts, always asking questions. And I've noticed yeah, that like, so busy. I've, um, honestly, if you got to <laughs> let me talk. And if not, then you're we hitting a 10, aren't you? We just, you're going to 10. All right. Never mind. Thanks anyway. And now that's she, that's first. And now scene over. This person's not going to give you what you're any space if that's the way it is. Okay, fine. So you have to, you have to move out. Okay. Cause that's obnoxious. Yeah, I agree. What if they go like this? What if they go? Yeah. Well, okay. No, go do it again. Oh, do you want to treat it real now? That was real. Yeah. You got to get out. Okay. Go ahead. Do it again. Uh, Hey, there's something that's that I've been thinking about that I noticed about myself. I've been really anxious. And since we spend so much time together, I wanted to share some stuff with you. Do you have the space for me to tell you this? I need like a few minutes. Uh, Yeah, a few minutes, yeah. Um, also, I want to let you know, this is not about you. This is me. 
but it does involve you because we live together. I'm on all the time and I'm traveling and I'm talking and I'm podcasting. I'm answering questions and I'm meeting people. And I've noticed that my I'm just like getting so fucking drained. And I need to find a space where I could just like be by myself and kind of like get my energy back. And I've noticed when I come home, I love living with you. Um, and sometimes I want to play, but I don't like answering questions. I know that sounds ridiculous and it is. As far as we're concerned now, we're going to have to, I'm sure we could find a balance, but like starting, like when I get back, how was your trip? Fine. But like, as you keep asking, I just notice myself, I don't have the space for it. So I guess what I'm saying is I want to have some type of a code word. If I'm feeling like drained and you're asking me stuff or we're talking about stuff, I might just be like, I need my alone time. If you could just respect that. Yeah, totally. Great. I won't ask you questions ever again. All right. Thank you. But then you walk in and there's just silence. Same with when you live alone. But now you have somebody helping with your rent. We'll be right back. <laughs> it's a word from baskets <laughs> again. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. I'll try it. You tell, That's what my therapist said. He said the same thing. When you tell people what you want, you might get it. But the, okay. But then what if I want to ask a question? What if I'm like- Ask a question. Okay, I can ask questions still. Listen, if somebody is going to, and so could they. That's why if it starts to be silent, I mean, that's, pa if the person then, I won't ask you anything ever. I know what you were saying. It's childish and- It is kind of like that. There but, is a passive aggressive. Yeah, there are people, but that's, you know, you could only, you're responsible for your side of the street. Yes. But you could also let people, know, listen, I, know, I recognize you're not asking me any questions. If that's the way you want to handle it, so be it. But also, like, that's not what I mean. I just mean I want to be able to feel safe in saying to you in shorthand, I don't have it in me. And same with you. And if you ask questions and then they're like, eh, it's like, oh, this person sucks. This person is sucks. And then okay, when people great. suck, get the fuck out of there. But you might not know when people suck. You might think somebody sucks because they're not living by your rules. They don't even know your rules. So this person fucking Yeah, it sucks. would be so nice. If I walked into the house and they're like, whoa, I just had a crazy bike ride. I would love that. That I have no problem with. It really is the inquisition. It really is the like- Small just, talk. I don't yeah. want to do it. Well, it's also the like, it, it truly is the, the getting off a gig. And like one time I was on a plane and I ran into Sam Morell and he was like, where were you just now? And I was like, and I couldn't conjure up the city that I was literally leaving. It was so crazy. And I think there is something about like, it's a lot to do like, five or six shows in a weekend. And then you do kind of compress it and you're like, it's gone away. The sets yeah. are recorded. Things will be made of it. It is over. That I do think there is like a cracking back into it. That's like a, I don't know. There is something about it that gets me active. Like I, I want to just be fresh in New York and I binged ate right. candy in my, in my, in my hotel room. And then I'm done with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. It seems like, yeah. Like that's the black and white we're talking about. I'm doing this. My focus is here. I'm done with it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, similar to a relationship when they say you're done and then it opens it back up and then I'm done and then it opens it back up. And it's like, it's so unpredictable. I feel unsafe. Are we done with yeah. this? Are we talking? Are we done with this? Yeah, it's anxiety. And that's to you, that's what social interactions are. It's not being in control with what you want to be doing and when you want to be doing it. And I think the problem is less about the questions and more about your inability to control the way you feel. How do you self-soothe? Self-soothe. How do you self-soothe? Run, I run. Right. A lot. Like exercise yes. and build your endorphins? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Why does that look surprising? Do yeah. I not look like a runner to you? No, that's not. I was just wondering if you meant like run away. Oh, like you run away no, from the situation. I run. Well, I often tell people I'm a runner and then they look my body up and down. I'm like, I'm also an eater. I also eat a lot. Let me see what that would look like. Say you're a runner. I'm a, I'm a runner. No, it's more like this. It's more like this. You go ahead. I'm a runner. All right, let me try. No, 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 no. I just mimicked you. I shouldn't have done that. Go ahead. Do it again. Uh, I'm a runner. Oh, cool. It's like that. It's subtle. Can we try? Okay, Same. go ahead. I'm a runner. No, no eyebrow. <laughs> that would be great. That would be ideal. But no, it's more like a, huh? okay. But yeah, I do run every day or most days mm. around Prospect Park. Mm. Shout out Prospect Park. Put their Instagram handle up here. Yeah, thank you. What'd you think? How did this podcast go? I loved it. I want to live here. You I mean, I, d I would wall? never want to live here in a million years, but I, w I would live in the proximity of you. It's sad that you live in LA. You don't want to live here, meaning this building, this city? I would live this in this building, but... You need more things on the wall. It's There's a lot. I was a contractor. There's a lot in this apartment. That Once is, you're a contractor, you're always a contractor. Right. You can't... You can take the contractor out of the girl, but then you just have... Then, then you have a cunt. Right. Yeah. 
And when you're having your druthers in the South, also a tractor. Right. Right. The name of my special. If your sister was really fat, you could call her a cunt tractor. Right. But she's not fat, which is why she's a cunt. If she was fat, right. she'd be a sister. Are you friends with your sister? Yes. Is there any good blood between you and your sister? Now there is. Now there is. She just went to a, <laughs> a meditate, not a meditation, but a therapy retreat. And she called me and she said, I finally forgiven myself for beating you, beating you within an inch of your life, your whole childhood. And I was like, you forgave me? You forgave you? You forgave you? You forgave yourself? <laughs> you Should forgave I receive? Her? Are you going to forgive? Will I be getting a finger in the mail then? Uh-huh. What does that mean? Like like I should get something. Right. But yeah, so she was like a very violent, but now she's all fang, uh, kumbaya. Yeah. So we get along better. She used to be crazy. Yeah. But now I kind of have, have the crazy. Right. Because She beat it into you. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm feng shui. I'm kumbaya with certain things. The running helps. Mm-hmm. Comedy helps. I would now love for you to practice at least knowing what you want. You know, like once you could see the dot, it's easier to see it. Knowing that you want to come home and not asking the questions. It's better thinking, instead of knowing, I hate my roommates, I hate this feeling I have, instead of the negative, and I mean that word literally, like the negative, the reverse of like the positive version of that is like, not what do I hate, what do I not want, which is important, but then how do you translate that into what I do want? Ugh, I don't want fucking fast food. Okay, that is information, but we don't have enough yet. What do you want? Well, not wanting fast food. I think I want something healthy. Okay, we're getting there. I want, you know, what do I want? Knowing what you want and then getting it. You you could be a very good therapist. Thank you. You should watch the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. We do have a great- Do you do this a lot? I mean, when it comes up, I, I, I love figuring out why we feel the way we feel. And there's only so many things we could do. There's like four things you could do. Do you, you meditate? Um, No. No. I have I have my own version of meditation. I yeah. masturbate. Right, 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 right. Um, but while I'm masturbating, I think about like breathe boundaries. In, breathe out. Yes. Yeah. You go to therapy. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know about the weekly therapy thing. It feels crazy. I go weekly sometimes and then I'll take months off. Similarly really? how I go to my general practitioner. <laughs> I would like that. I need months off. Oh, wow. I go years off with the practitioner. We know. Boy, howdy. He tried to take blood the other day. I fainted. He has three little Asian nurse- nurses. And they were half my size and I was fainting and I was just bringing them down. It was like Godzilla. It you was, bring up little Asians a lot. I love little Asians. Okay. Doesn't everybody? I don't know. Everybody not, on I'm the podcast doesn't bring it up? No. Really? No. Tiny little Asians? Mm-hmm. Huh. I thought this was that podcast. Oh, so. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Please don't fuck with me. Okay. Here, one, one to clean off with the stuff that's there. Do you want like a real napkin? Is it something? That's fine. This is fine. And there's another one. I'll get you something to dry your hands. No, it's all right. It's fine. I don't need anything to dry my hands. Oh, you don't want to put that on. Uh, oh, that's what that, what that, what's the third, second one for I then? Did, just to do it better. Oh, <laughs> what's the second one for? The, the maybe put the first one on. So anyway, what? I, what's this for? Okay, I'll bring this over. Okay. You could take the table with you, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes. Bobby Lee, very funny. Yeah. I think we're going to have him on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the little Asians in Chinatown that wear the recycling bags and then they collect all the recycling, but they're wearing the recycling bag as a poncho. So then sometimes you mix them up with the big recycling bag and then they move and it scares you and you realize it's a little Asian lady. And have you seen it? It's like a, it's like a whatever Howl's Moving Castle film. I, um, I, I try not to speak about other people. It's incredible. That's why this city is better than LA because of those little tiny Asian people who look like recycling bins, but then they're people. So you believe New York is better than LA? Yes. And I like LA a lot. Who's better, Kobe or Jordan or LeBron? I was named after Jordan. Jordan. You know what my opinion is? Hmm. Just that. Really? My opinion. I don't think anything's better than anything else. I mean, I'm better than people, but I don't think that um, Jordan is better than people. And I don't think LeBron is better than people. I don't think Kobe's better than people. Uh, To quote Bob Dylan, Nobody's better than you think that you're better than nobody. And nobody's better than you. If you believe, really believe that, then you know you've got nothing to prove. lose and nothing to prove. You know, um, Kobe would say that, you know, Jordan, you know, got his stuff from magic and all the other people. And he, Kobe got his AIDS? stuff from, from Jordan. Sorry. And LeBron got his stuff from Kobe and the game evolves. And to say who was better, it was a different time period. 
And that's the same in New York and LA. It doesn't exist at the same time. Have you ever been in New York and LA at the same time? No, it's always three hours apart. Third I base. do like going back in time. And then if you lived in LA, you just got to keep those three hours forever. Two. It's three. You leave here at noon, New York time. What time do you get to LA? Three. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Two, wow. 2.30. And so it's, yeah, it's three hours. So, right. Because, because the plane, if the plane ride is five and you lose You're three. Right. Yeah, almost. I mean this. Exclusively. Almost always. You're right. You so think that's true? I used to always think I was right. And then I found out that I'm wrong sometimes. Okay. And now as I've, now I'm, now that I'm, I'm not fully enlightened, but like, I'm like, I see so much. And I also am aware that there's stuff I don't see. I'm, I'm not like, because I'm not sure often. I'm often not sure. Okay. But when I am sure, I'm almost always right. I just am not sure. All really? The time. Yeah. I just, I can't, if I'm not sure, I'm not sure. If I'm sure, there's a reason I'm sure. A lot of people say, you know, as we're on the subject of, of steamboats. What was that whole sentence you just said? Mark Twain says, I've said this saying all the time and I never say it right, but it's it's not, being wrong isn't the problem. It's, it's it, no, uh, being wrong isn't the problem. It's knowing you're right when it just ain't so. I right. Love, because like everyone knows things. Stop knowing things unless you know it. Right. If I know something, I know it. Right. So sometimes I'm wrong. I've missed something. But when I know something, I know it. Yeah. And I know. So you just know how to admit when you don't know something. That's really what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm pretty stubborn and defensive, so I, I, I won't do that sometimes. Okay. So you were wrong about that before. Mm -hmm. Okay. See? I can admit it. <laughs> Second base. <laughs> yeah, you're good at deflecting on things you don't know. Like when I brought up libertarianism, you really, we turned a corner. You know what I mean? No, no I, I, I cut back to it because I said, tell me what that means to you because I wanted to know what that meant to you. Did and you just tell John Michael to cut back to that? Yeah, he's the best. He's going to cut back. So what John Michael does is he watches and goes through, but then there's a second pass. So as stuff happens later on, he now knows where to do it. Wow. Yeah. You pay him well? I'd like to pay him better, but yes. John Michael, we'd pay you well if you switch teams. Yeah. To the old. Yeah, that's, that's, what, her, that's what her mom said. Your mom switched teams. Oh, she's a die. Yeah, so the reason why John Michael wouldn't want to work with you, you don't have, it's, your things go over your head. You need to be able to think oh, of things in the oh, moment. Oh, even that went over my head. You sim, you right. doing the signal for I going know. over my head. Yeah, 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 a lot of things go over yeah, my head. Yeah, he wouldn't, you wouldn't, he wouldn't be creatively challenged with you. So you giving him the things, so is he going to roll back to the libertarianism remark? Um, it's up to him. He also knows that this is a casual place. If he thinks it's worth it, go for it. If not, I'm not going to piss, piss in my pants. It's like, you know, like if he's doing, if he's doing an episode and he's feeling and John Michael, you know this, but so, if, you know, fast forward, you know, so this whole thing is unedited. How now. old is he? Is he young? Yeah. But we're back at the beginning of the podcast. Um, uh, the, the, the truth is like, I love what John Michael does. He does so much and he helps me so much because I used to do all of this or most at least. And I've gotten to the point now where it's a great, I love, I love working with him and he's so good and he's so much better than what I was doing. But also like. I, we had these conversations like a lot of this is a lot of editing, but if you're not in the mood and you don't want to, or this, you know, you're yes. busy this way, like do whatever, dude. Totally. And I feel that way about like, as a person too, like wear the sweatpants, do, do what you want to do. The, the product is beautiful. Man, Roy Wood Jr. was on stage in sweatpants the other day. I have to go. Okay. And he, I, he's so funny. He's so funny, but. I could see every wrinkle on his penis. Every. Why does he have so many wrinkles on his penis? Is that a black thing? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on by. Yeah. Yeah. What, anything else you want to plug? Uh, Roy Wood's penis. Okay. We'll put him a picture here. <laughs> um, when is this coming out? Uh, it's going to be a little bit. I'll let you know, but I have a bunch in the can right now. Great. Jordan so. Jensen, LOL, stop. Uh, I have a fake Twitter. I mean, somebody has a Twitter of me right. at Big Boy Wombus. Right, Gambit. Uh, um, he says really fucked up things Gordon on there, so Keiko. it's not me. Okay. Um, now I normally take Polaroids, but I don't have my. I don't travel with a Polaroid, so I'm gonna have to make one. So could could you look at this camera as if it's the Polaroid and sit and just smile away? They're always kind of like this on Polaroids because it's a flash. All right, great. We got it. Okay. And uh, theme music. Oh, wait, before the theme music, I guess could, the theme music's going, but it's the instrumental. Um, pod.snaps, I'll be putting all the Polaroids up on Instagram. That's pod.snaps, all of our Polaroids. All right.
theme music. Or, you know, title card. Now the title card is up. The music is going. Scooch is happening. Now you're doing mixed. his job. Now we hear me underneath. Well, that, I, there's a direction that I, we give on the pod. Right, but I think he knows that, all that stuff. I, no, no, not necessarily. I think there's a micromanaging not thing happening. John? You could be right. Yeah. I could admit that when I'm wrong. Let me get you an Uber.